<laughs> You're welcome. Event of uh, uh, June 2nd, uh, 2012. Uh, we continue to remember this day uh, as a special day because Prof uh, stood for um, everything positive about advancing development, education, and the uh, um, well being of uh, the community as a whole and even beyond the community to the state and the country. And it was a national assignment when this that event occurred. Um, it's on um, the strength of his uh, legacy and the life that he lived. And of course, his idea to start the Professor Omulari Foundation while he was alive, uh, that we have continued this legacy. And we are happy to reconvene once more, despite the difficulties of this year, uh, with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We are happy to uh, be uh, here uh, through another means to achieve the objective of uh, continuing in his uh, uh, legacy. So um, it's a wonderful day uh, all over the world and I want to welcome everybody um, who um, has joined us today. Um, we have uh, a lot of uh, um, distinguished uh, personalities who are here with us. We also have a lot of um, uh, support from key partners um, from all around the, the world who are also working with the Professor Only Foundation Profound uh, to bring uh, this special uh, memorial lecture, eighth memorial lecture to all and sundry. Um, I want to start by um, introducing um, uh, some of the key persons and mentioning some of the key partners that uh, we have. Um, most importantly, we have uh, the uh, the chairman of the occasion um, by the name of uh, Professor Epiphany 
Azinge. Um, Prof has been so wonderful, and Prof has uh, uh, has joined us even uh, before. Of course, the four o'clock he's been here. He's been throughout the preparation and all the planning. He's been with us. So, Prof, we want to welcome you. Prof is a um, senior advocate of Nigeria. Um, he's um, a, a national awardee of the Office of the Order of the Niger, and uh, he's also an electoral judge of the Commonwealth uh, Arbitral Tribunal in London, and uh, he's very grounded here in Nigeria um, as uh, the President General of the Asaba Development Union worldwide. So, Professor Espanya Zinge, we know this is uh, just a super summary of uh, the colossus that you are, but we want to thank you very much for joining us today and uh, agreeing to share uh, this occasion. And we uh, thank and appreciate you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Yes, uh, we also have uh, a number of other uh, important uh, persons who are here with us. Um, because of time, uh, we will also just call through um, these uh, personalities um, quickly. So um, I will leave the keynote speaker for last because he would um, take over uh, once we are done with the introduction and other aspects of our program. So we have also with us um, um, what we're talking about today is related to development of young persons. Uh, to uh, new media, or what we call social media, and um, to some of the new things, uh, new tools that we are using um, um, that weren't available uh, 25 years ago. So we have uh, a youth ambassador with us, some policy analyst. He's a very special person uh, at home, actually, in the uh, in, in state. He's uh, Akwarandu, um, Ike, I call him Akwarandu, AIC. Akwarandu, Akwarandu is the, um, he, the, the, he used to be, or he is, uh, the special assistant, senior special assistant to uh, the governor emeritus of the uh, Imo State, uh, Nakai Hedioha. Um, he is a very savvy new media um, uh, uh, user and actor. He is an influencer uh, on uh, social media and one of the emerging voices uh, in that space in uh, the southeast and uh, he's also the executive director of Focal Digital Media. So uh, he's also good to say that. Uh, we also have uh, joining us. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Ike. We also have joining us uh, uh, His Royal Majesty uh, Igwe. Uh, Nemeka Achebe, uh, who is the uh, royal father of today, is the OB of Onicha. And uh, he uh, is uh, also a very, a very yeah. Yeah. So we welcome His Royal Majesty. We also have um, um, Dame, Dame Yom Josephine Aneni, who is the president of the uh, president of the Nkata, Nkata, Nkata Ndi Yomibo. Uh, she's the mother of the day and we welcome her as well. <laughs> we also have uh, with, um, his Lordship, Most Reverend uh, Professor J. Honor, who is the Catholic Bishop of Umsuka Diocese and who will be the father of the day today. Also joining us uh, are many of our key uh, partners. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Jude. Judy Homer, who is um, the senior um, and technical coordinator uh, and also director of uh, the NBC Policy Roundtable, the NPR, and he has been wonderful. He put together the entire uh, Zoom platform that we are using today. So you can see that the media cuts across uh, all ages and uh, all, all the uh, professions. He's a medical doctor and we appreciate him. We also uh, have them um, joining us, uh, Professor Binika Agulana, um, at LSM. Uh, she is uh, an academician and um, uh, professor at the Imo State University and uh, dean, one-time dean of both education and student 
affairs in that university. We also have uh, the former Inspector General of Police, uh, uh, Mike, uh, uh, Dr. Mike Okiro uh, of the KSJ International. Uh, he's very well known in the country for um, the role he played um, as an, an IG of police and also leading the police service uh, commission, which uh, he only recently handed over to handed. And we have uh, Chief uh, Sa uh, Na Wodo, um, KSJ I as well, who is um, President General of Ohana and Ibo. Um, he needs no introduction. Uh, of course, Ohana is the um, uh, overarching uh, uh, body of all Ibo. Uh, but um, societies and organizations, they oversee all that uh, we do. In addition, we have um, uh, other persons, um, the editor-in-chief of Elomba.com joining us. And uh, we also have uh, Dr. Victor Chilaka, uh, who is also the study of the international liaison of the uh, NBC indigenous. Uh, they are a very important partner to the Professor Only Foundation. Um, they started uh, working with us to set up a scholarship for um, uh, university undergraduates in Nigeria in honor of Professor Only. And that scholarship has been going on now for um, almost for half about half a decade. So uh, we appreciate you and uh, we welcome you. Uh, Dr. Victor Chiraka. Yes. And we have many other uh, distinguished uh, personalities. Uh, and uh, as I said, I will keep the best for last. I would like to uh, do the first summary or cursory introduction of our guest speaker, uh, who is uh, a great leader and a great scholar as well. Uh, he's none other than Professor uh, Prince, Eddie. Origi. Um, his profile says that he's a U.S.-based uh, biopharma executive, but uh, Prof goes beyond that title. Prof wears so many hats. Uh, prof is uh, a very active uh, community mobilizer. He's a very ardent, uh, you know, supporter, supporter of good governance courses around the world, and uh, he's also one of the key arrowheads of uh, the democracy democracy that we have today and enjoy today uh, in Nigeria, uh, being a former um, um, uh, fourth four leading person of the Nadeko movement. So Prof is also an awardee of uh, Profound, the Prof Only Foundation, uh, one of the leading awardees, and uh, he will be a guest speaker today. He has a range of experience across various platforms um, and, um, and in the media, etc., and various industries as well. Uh, he's trained as a pharmacist, but of course, he's currently uh, in the corporate world of the pharmacy of the pharmaceutical industry today. So, Prof, you're welcome. Uh, we thank you for accepting to give this uh, uh, this lecture. Uh, Prof is also, uh, of course, a member of the family, and we're very proud of you. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so, quickly, we... Um, want to especially appreciate all and everyone the, who have, who have uh, come in um, or who have logged on to this uh, special eighth and first Zoom online uh, memorial lecture of Professor Theo young um, We want to especially also recognize members of the family. We want to represent them um, um, just uh, recognize uh, the younger brother of Professor Ong Liri who is the Professor Festus uh, Onwuliri, is also on the call. want to uh, also appreciate other members of the family. Dr. Edward uh, Onwuliri is also on the call. And uh, many others are here as well. They, all the Onwuliris are here. I also want to appreciate my brothers and sisters who are also here. Uh, I can see my elder brother who is on the call as well. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I would um, like to quickly move on with the items on the agenda. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Chinemarim Daniel Onwuliri. I'm a medical doctor practicing in Enugu, uh, Nigeria. And uh, I'm also happy to be uh, here uh, today to moderate, to serve as moderator of this uh, lecture. 
we hope to have a very engaging session where we'll start um, with, uh, we'll do, after these preliminaries, we'll have the opening prayer, and uh, after the opening prayer, we'll quickly move on to uh, get a few remarks from um, our most distinguished uh, chairman, uh, after which uh, we will talk, give a little background, um, or get a little background from the convener, who is uh, the uh, minister, honorable minister emeritus, and we will uh, proceed to um, talk about the foundation and the lecture will hold on. These will take a few minutes. Then we will now do tail into the main business of the day, uh, which is um, the, um, the lecture. Um, so we would have uh, Dr. Judy Homer doing a little introduction um, of the details of the well, 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 well. we, we beg all of us to listen in. There will be room for questions and answers, uh, if we, and also contributions as well. Uh, it is always nice to mute your call if um, you want to have a side conversation while we are uh, with an opening prayer, which is customary um, in Ibo land. Um, so we'd invite uh, um, uh, Opera Prof, Ken uh, the only, to give us uh, a, a word of prayer. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> thank you. Um, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank and praise you for the gift of life. We thank and praise you for the gift of family. We thank and praise you for the gift of being here to have this lecture. We thank and praise for everyone who has come in. We ask you to bless us, bless everyone here, bless our families, our jobs, our livelihoods, and bless our country, Nigeria. And bless the Igbo man, the Igbo nation, the Mbisi nation, and each and every one of us. And we pray that we continue to survive in this pandemic, continue to survive in this nation, and we'll continue to survive in everything we do. That will always give, have a cause to glorify your holy name, all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Amen. Spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus, or not Mary. Thank you very much, um, Opera Muhi, uh, I'm the only lady for uh, the prayer. Um, that was uh, very uh, important. So now that we have uh, called on God to direct our affairs, we will uh, move on to um, invite, in a special way, um, the chairman of today's session, uh, uh, Professor Tiffany Azinge, uh, who is uh, also a chair uh, uh, of the Knights of St. John International and uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria and uh, of uh, uh, the etc. So, so prof, prof, you're welcome. You have the floor uh, to uh, go ahead. Thank you. Very much. Uh, uh, let me start with the protocols. The Royal Majesty Igwe Nemeka Achebe, Abu Gideobi of Onicha and Royal Father of the Day, the Father of the Day, and our Father in the Lord, Most Reverend PG Honor, Catholic Bishop of Onicha uh, Msoka Diocese. The Mother of the Day, E. Young Josephine Anini. Our great and erudite guest speaker, Professor Prince E.D. Oparaji, an international scholar and human rights activist. Our special guests of honor, Senator Enyin Nayabari, the Minority Leader of the Senate, Chief Sir John Nyamodo, the President General of Ohanes Ndibo, Sir Dr. Michael Kiro, former Inspector General of Police, also Knight of St. John, Professor Lady Gineka Gulana, former Dean of Education in Su, Tim. Elomba, editor in chief, Elomba and Co. 
Dr. Judy Hama, Chief Program Director of the State Policy Roundtable. Our convener, Her Excellency Professor Lady Viola Muleri, former Supervising Minister of Foreign Affairs. Akwarandu, Akwarandu Policy Analyst and New Media Consultant. Our dear moderator, Dr. Chinemeran Dan Onwuleri, and other members of late Professor Celestine Onwuleri Foundation. Our esteemed participants and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed highly humbled by the invitation to chair the eighth Professor Celestine Onwuleri Memorial Lecture titled, The Role of Social Media and Human Capacity Development and in the Development of Iboland. My review of the last seven memorial lectures shows a consistent high standard of scholarly exposition and cross-cutting analysis of issues that are designed to impact our nation and our people positively. Permit me to commend our convener, Her Excellency, Professor Viola Omuleri and other members of the late Professor Sir Celestine Omuleri Foundation, profound, for establishing the foundation, nurturing it, and sustaining the objectives for which the foundation was established. Late Professor Sir Celestine Omuleri, KSJI, was well known to many of us. Here was a man whose enduring accomplishments span across different and varying spheres of human endeavor. He was an academic giant, administrative colossus, visionary leader, a noble knight of St. John's International, a devoted Catholic of notable spirituality, a man of the people whose footprints remain indelible in our landscape, a great family man, an illustrious son of Igbo land, and a highly patriotic Nigerian. Professor Muleri now belongs to the history of Nigeria, and has a place there in the Shalab. Uh, I think um, we may have lost the uh, prof momentarily uh, due to the network. He will be back uh, on again. So let's. Uh... Let's sort out the, the technical uh, challenge with uh, the call. Okay, I think he's back on. So while we're waiting for Prof to come on, just uh, to go over uh, what we have on, um, after Prof is uh, uh, through with the opening remarks as the chairman, uh, we would uh, uh, proceed to introduce the guest lecturer and uh, proceed with the lecture in a couple of minutes. So, um, uh, but of course, remember that this is Zoom. Zoom has made life uh, a bit possible and easier but there will always be uh, one or two challenges, especially as we hash out uh, 3, 4G, 5G, and uh, beyond. So we also appeal for uh, your understanding. Uh, yeah, so I think Prof, uh, I'm back. Prof, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry for that. Hello? Go on, Prof. Yeah, Prof, go ahead, go ahead Prof. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry about that intervention. Please, uh, that's, that's, that's right. I was saying that Professor Muleri now belongs to the history of Nigeria and has a place there in that shall abide for all time. Whatever the criterion, 
Professor Muleri was a great man and has a, an abiding place in the history of this nation. In the public life of Nigeria, Professor Muleri was an example of conscientiousness, thoroughness, complete devotion to duty and above all, of the highest standard of integrity. His mental power and fertility, the sheer quality of his personality and intellectual drive impressed itself on all those who came in contact with him. So today we are gathered to celebrate this outstanding scholar by this memorial lecture. I have no doubt that our guest speaker, by virtue of his intimidating credentials, is eminently equipped to treat us to an intellectual feast. On behalf of the convener and profound, I want to welcome our royal father of the day, our father in the Lord, our mother of the day, our special guests of honor, and indeed all participants that have joined to give honor to an eminent son of Africa and a citizen of the world. Let me hope that in the course of our conversation, there will be enough time for participants to weigh in and make necessary interventions on the subject matter. I wish us a very wonderful conversation and a fruitful outcome. May the soul of Professor Sir Celeste Dongulari continue to rest in perfect peace. May his, mem may his memory be a blessing. I thank you all for your attention. Thank, thank you very much, um, Professor Stefania Zinge, for the wonderful opening remarks. Uh, we continue to uh, appreciate you for um, how you have uh, eulogized and um, given a lot of insight into um, Prof. Uh, uh, we, without wasting any further uh, time or do, we will proceed to invite Dr. Judy Homer, uh, who is uh, director of the MBC Policy Roundtable to introduce, uh, uh, give us the profile of our guest speaker, uh, Professor Eddie Oporogy, so that we can also proceed with the business of the day. Thank you, sir. Dr. Judy, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, again, uh, I welcome, greetings, and I welcome everybody to the eighth Professor C.O.E. on the Memorial Lecture today. Um, I will stand on the existing protocol that has been well established by our chairman, uh, our professor, who is a, a distinguished chairman. So I will stand on the on the on the protocol that we have uh, eloquently established. Uh, my name is Dr. Judy Homer, and I'm the chief program director of Umbisa Policy Roundtable. Uh, of which uh, our guest speaker, Professor Edward Oporoji, is our able chairman. NPR is the premier eminent business policy round policy and business council, entirely focused on the development of MBC, and which our uh, late brother, Professor Omonere's life really exhibited throughout his life. I don't need to read the, um, all professor's profile. I think he's known, uh, but I have to say that um, not only that he's a pharmacy professor emeritus, everybody knows that he's an international scholar. He's an executive here in the United States with the pharmaceutical companies. But most importantly, he is a fearless advocate for the human rights. He fights like a lion and has a heart of a lamb. And I'm happy and honored to be his friend and call him his friend. 
So Professor Poroji, I'm very, very happy to be your friend, to fight along with you because you are a trusted brother and a friend. So I am pleased, join me in welcoming our 2020 guest speaker to the eighth Professor CEO on Wolders Memorial Lecture, Professor Prince Edward Oparoji. Prof, unmute yourself. Thank you. We'll have to get used to Zoom one sometime uh, in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ihoma. Um, I want to say thank you also to the moderator. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the convener, uh, for this uh, rare uh, opportunity and honor uh, to be the guest uh, presenter uh, in this uh, very, very prestigious occasion. I want to also uh, say thank you to the chairman uh, for a very uh, eloquent uh, introduction uh, that uh, will definitely, I'm sure, because of uh, the limited time we have, um, a whole lot more can be said uh, in addition. But um, at this point in time, I will say that I also stand on existing uh, protocol uh, in recognizing uh, the wealth and breadth of uh, the uh, headliners in this uh, uh, conference, as well as uh, all the attendees. Um, the topic we have today is uh, something that I believe uh, also plays uh, squarely into the mindset and how Professor Pro, uh, uh, Professor Ogmolary, you know, lived his life. He is not somebody that gives to excuses. Professor Ogmolary believes that you ought to be at any point in time, be able to take control of your destiny. And if you knew him when he was alive, there is nothing that uh, you will bring to uh, Professor Ogmolary and say, hey, um, can you do this? Do you have the expertise to do this? And he'll tell you, no, he doesn't do that. Rather, he will go back, walk at it. And when he comes back to you with a response, you will know that uh, he really is somebody who does not take uh, uh, imperfection at all. So uh, today, what we are trying to do is uh, look at the environment we found ourselves and see what can we as individuals and what can we as a people do to make sure that uh, the environment that we find ourselves uh, do not crush us for lack of, uh, for lack of uh, uh, preparedness. So uh, this topic today is something that is very germane, and very, very dear to some of our lives. Well, my name, my name, my name, say my name more. My name, they come out of. Now, the topic of today, like I said, the role of social uh, in human capacity. Is, is, is there a way to mute everybody so that uh, um, they are speaking now? Yeah. So, um, then you can just uh, unmute me. Uh, Prof, unmute yourself. Okay. So um, the topic of today is the role of social media in human capacity development and the development of uh, Igbo land. Like I started saying, even though the concept of social media cannot be said to be an entirely new phenomenon, it is apt to say that the 21st century in the 21st century, it has become the most important technological innovation that has shaped human interaction and communication. 
In our age and time, the social media, or what many may call the new media, has become significantly revolutionized in such a way that social relations, not just among individuals, but also among communities, have been trem tremendously impacted. The social media, the, the social, the use of social media has skyrocketed over the past decade and a half. Whereas only 5% of adults in the United States reported using social media in, the platform, uh, in 2005, that number now hovers around 70%. And among the teenagers, it's even much higher, hovers around 81%. And more than a third reports that every third report that uh, they use even social media sites multiple times an hour, not just the multiple sites an hour. So it's a very prevalent uh, mode of communication among the youths. These statistics, these statistics have risen dramatically over the past six years, likely driven, driven by increased access to mobile devices, growth in the number of people who use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and other social media platforms, and the time spent on them has garnered interest and concern among policymakers, teachers, parents, clinicians, about the impact of social media in our lives. That said, it's even more compelling when you look at the fact that Facebook, the largest social media platform in the world, has about 2.4 billion users. In 2020, over 3.6 billion people were using social media worldwide. The number projected to increase to almost 4.41 billion in 2025. These are huge numbers, especially when juxtaposed with the world population of about 7.7 .7 billion people. No wonder one will realize and say for sure that no matter what anyone thinks, unless you probably are so naive about it, the social media has changed the world. We live in this world and we definitely have to know how to navigate in it. The rapid and vast adoption of these technologies is changing how we access information, connect with friends and families, and how we organize to demand social and political changes. One is persuaded to assume that the rapid revolution and evolution of the social media may have been driven not just by the rapid advances in digital technology, but more by the compelling need of man to communicate in a more efficient and effective way and in real time. It is this capacity of the social media to effectively and efficiently mediate communication in real time that has recalibrated its impact on human capacity development, as well as the development of communities. In real terms, the social media is a form of mass media. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary has defined this form of mass media as forms of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other contents such as videos. As stated, earlier, as stated earlier, common social media platforms include Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and Twitter. If you're on this call and you don't know any of this, you're in trouble. Many perspectives have been evoked on how this form of communication has transformed human capacity and development in our time. On one side are those suggesting that the social media has done more harm than good because of the difficulty in regulating its content. However, there are those who argue that the social media has stimulated human capacity development and therefore can drive the development of any society, including the Igbo land. Thus, the aim of my presentation here today is to explore the role of the social media in human capacity development from the standpoint of using such internet-based avenues of information exchange, news, knowledge, and skills 
in capacity building and also how this capacity can be deployed in the development of the Igbo homeland. In doing this, this paper will attempt to establish a nexus between the application of social media and development. A little bit overview on uh, what is actually human capacity development. The question of societal development has always been linked to the painstaking harmonization of the inherent capacities of people living in that society. Relying on the assumption, scholars have argued that from the dawn of history, individuals and communities have always tried to drive their development process by identifying, developing, and utilizing the various capabilities of its people for sustainable development. What this means is that different people in the society have different capacities which must be harnessed for the overall benefit of that society. In truth, in whatever form we contextualize the development process of society, the end point always, the end point always is to meet the expectation of the people in terms of enhancing the standard of living and helping the drive to drive the development uh, process. Put into proper perspective, the foregoing indicates that effective human capacity development is the engine room of progressive development. In other words, when we talk about the development of any society, we are not merely talking about structures. We are basically referring to the progressive realization of the capacities, abilities, and talents of each individual in the society for their own satisfaction and enhancement of the good of the community at large. The implication of this is that no society can ignore the continuous improvement of the skills, knowledge base, education, competencies, and the strategic alignment of these people, communities, businesses, and other institutions to national development without a concerted effort to effective human capacity building and development. This is asynchronous for an all-round sustainable development. So what is capacity building or capacity development? Capacity building or capacity development can be defined as a process by which individuals and organizations obtain, improve, or retain the skills, knowledge, knowledge, tools, equipment, and other resources needed to do their job competently. Such capacity building or development gives individual members of the society the latitude to perform their task with greater efficiency and capacity. According to the UNDP, capacity building is the creation of an enabling environment with appropriate policy and legal frameworks, individual development, including community participation, human resources development, and the strengthening of managerial systems. It is the elements that give fluidity, flexibility, functionality of a community to adapt to changing needs of the population that it serves. On its own, the Ford Foundation has also defined capacity building as a process of developing and strengthening the skills, instincts, abilities, processes, and resources that organizations and communities need to survive, adapt, and or thrive in the fast changing world. And basically, capacity building encompasses all aspects of awareness raising, education and training, attitude change, confidence building, participation in decision making and action. A critical goal of human capacity development is that of maximizing people's potential to contribute to development by participating fully in all its activities. Through capacity building individuals, and groups are empowered to expand their abilities to fully participate in the development process. So now, how does this all fit into what we're talking about in the development of Igbo land? In the, early, in the earlier sections of this talk, I define capacity building or capacity development as expanding what's existing level of knowledge, skill, and information to accommodate current and future adjustment needs. We argued 
that capacity building involves strengthening the knowledge base, abilities, skills, and behavior of individuals and improving institutional structures and process in such a way that individuals, organizations, and communities can efficiently meet their aspirations and goals in a sustainable manner. If the foregoing assertions are, called, are relied upon, then we can state categorically that the social media and its associated internet-based frontiers can be effectively deployed in the development process of any community, including the land. <clears throat> it is in this connection that we can talk about the social media as an agency for the development of Igbo homeland. There is no doubt that several groups, communities, organizations have leveraged on the positive sides of the social media in their development process. And the essence of our discussion today is to explore ways that we can deploy the social media in the develop development of our own political and social space. It is given that Igbo people are very enterprising with the capacity to make something out of nothing. The Igbo are the only group in Nigeria that has the capacity to invest and create a home outside the Igbo homeland. The Igbo are, may be accused of being fiercely individualistic, but nobody can deny their creativity, industry, and ingenuity. So that said, social media can be used for the development of Igbo land in the following ways. Let's take education. Given the enterprising, the Igbo enterprising and innovative spirit, a structured application of social media can be impactful on education development. For example, distant and online learning and exchange of information have so blossomed that many seem to think that everything in education is now possible through internet, and maybe it is, if well structured strategically. It has become fashionable for scholars and academics to share research experiences, ideas, and professional information through these avenues, be they open access or password required platforms. The Igbo intelligentsia can leverage on this for technological development of Igbo land. The speed and reach of this media and the comfort of access joined with the volume of information available at a click unquestionably fascinates, uh, fascinates every connected person. Information access through these avenues contribute to the capacity building at such level as self-help uh, self skills, social skills, work-related skills, and general problem solving through provision of solutions to simple and or very serious questions. These technologies have been, you know, been put in place in other parts of the world. And I'm sure that uh, all that we need is uh, some strategic alignment and uh, you know, we can also do the same. Uh, in China today, they are developing what they call smart classrooms. And uh, smart classrooms, a teacher can be, or a classroom can have uh, students from all across China keen into a classroom for a lecture. So it becomes some, a classroom without boundaries. This, this uh, student may access this classroom instruction from their dormitories, from their you know, restaurant, wherever they are, they can be in this smart classroom. And you know, why one would not say that we can jump to get there, but I know we have the uh, technology, technological manpower, know-how, or to be creative, you know, in uh, providing uh, accessible and qualitative education for our people. The other areas where we can also look at the social media, so rethinking and repurposing uh, online Igbo communities. There's no question that uh, there are so many Igbo communities that are either on WhatsApp, on Facebook, other social media platforms, and uh, in their different ways, they are, they are serving different purposes and different needs, which uh, are quite recommendable. But one thing that uh, we have not done well, how we can now expand and coordinate all these various uh, entities 
into one global uh, formidable uh, project oriented uh, you know, team. And I know that uh, Hannes and Debo has uh, been working and trying hard in this direction. And uh, it's something that uh, you know, must uh, be commended and uh, more effort needs to be uh, put uh, in those uh, areas. So it is important that uh, we begin to align our resources wherever we can find them uh, to uh, solve our unmet uh, needs. The other area where we can uh, uh, apply you know, social media is increasing political mobilization among the Igbo population. Social media networks are increasingly becoming a critical component of civil, civil, civic, engage, civic engagement and ideal mode of uh, communication. They generate visual discourse among friends, acquaintances, groups with similar aspirations and with whoever shares one's common interest. There is no gain saying that the fact that various social media networks have helped our people perform the crucial function of keeping in touch with people from around the world. They also connect with distant other distant others, including leaders and policymakers who are otherwise not easily reachable by any other means. So the social media is crucial for the political mobilization and development of Ebola. And some of us, some of you or some of us who are on social media or some of you are on Twitter, you find out that sometimes some of our political leaders or social influencers, uh, you cannot uh, you know, make an, uh, an appointment to see them in the office and uh, you are lucky. But uh, easily on social media, you can engage these people and uh, you know, make some headway in advocating for a cause or the other. All social media, social media can be applied in expanding the frontiers of a social mobilization. This is the process of bringing together allies to raise awareness of and demand for a particular program to assist in the delivery of the resources and services and to strengthen community participation for sustainability and self-reliance. Such allies include decision and policy makers, like I mentioned earlier, opinion leaders, NGOs, such as professional and religious groups, the media, the private sector, generates dialogue, negotiation and consensus, engaging a range of players in interrelated or complementary uh, efforts, taking into account the need of people uh, across uh, different cultural bounds. Ndibu can leverage on the social media for such social mobilization. Other areas that this can also be very viable is in deployment of social media, the deployment of social media for Igbo economic growth. In an increasingly economic connected world, the public's demand for quick, concise updates on pressing issues grows every day. Just a decade ago, government agencies and communities did not use social network to engage with the public. Many platforms did not exist and those that did were used for social interaction alone. But that has changed. Social media networks have become a legitimized form of communication that strengthens connections between public sector entities and the constituents they serve. The United States government through the Trade and Development Agency has deployed the social media to maximum effect to promote economic growth. Igbo communities within and outside Nigeria can also employ the social media in this manner to drive our internal and external economic growth. I will say, like mentioned earlier, that uh, various, you know, small groups uh, of uh, Igbo origin uh, abound everywhere, whether it be it on WhatsApp, on Facebook, or other social media, and uh, they do serve some good purpose um, that you know, can continue to uh, uh, expand, again, uh, put together a global strategy uh, for moving our economic uh, frontiers uh, will be one thing that uh, we can explore for these uh, various entities. Um, increasing accessibility to healthcare service in Ebola is also another veritable area where we can uh, 
you use uh, social media. It is now a known fact that the social media is assisting in those small measures improving accessibility to healthcare services and in particular counseling. Available evidence shows that this is more so for less complex procedures. If it is given that health is wealth, then we must take the health of our people seriously. And one way of keeping people informed of new trends in the medical field is through the social media. We cannot develop without a healthy population. Therefore, the use of social media to inform and educate our people in this area cannot be overemphasized. Again, everything that we talked about here means there's gonna be a unified strategy, overarching strategy that gives every Igbo entity human being a direction. We already have a general direction when uh, it was uh, Akurulo. Akurulo, I don't know who, who framed it, but uh, it's uh, an overarching, uh, uh, an, an overarching strategy that- uh, Well, back to God's finger, yeah. So, you say people like that, but you so um, Akurula, whoever phrased it, I think it has to be a has given us at least a basic framework from which you know to deploy all other you know, sub strategies and tactics, you know to you know uh, maximize and uh, invigorate uh, the development of uh, Ebola, including the healthcare sector. In a country as polarized as Nigeria with multifaceted problems, our people need, to need the skills of health professionals as well as their experiences and expertise to give vital information necessary for the people to, go, uh, to take good decisions concerning their health. The other area is uh, using the social media for technology transfer. The internet has become so integrated to such an extent that new innovations are daily emerging on the internet. This is one way the transfer of technology can occur. The Igbo are very innovative people and the guided application of social media could be one sure way of assessing and applying new technologies for the development of Igbo life. Going into conclusion, in this presentation, we have tried to examine the issue of social media, human capacity development, and deploying social media for the development of Igbo land. The thesis of this paper is that through the social media, is that though the social media is not a new phenomenon, but it has become so revolutionized in our time in such a way that it has altered the way we communicate. Despite the usual criticisms of social media, there is no gain saying that the fact that its impact, that its impact on human capacity development is enormous, especially in its interactivity capacity to build virtual communities and real-time reportage of issues. Basically, the social media has created several avenues for better and more functional human capacity building mechanisms, and to that extent can contribute to the development of society. It was based on this foregoing that we examine how the social media can be deployed in the development trajectory of Fiboland. And we have noted that if the social media is constructively used by our people, it can be used, it can be of great value in developing education in Iboland, help in creation, uh, with an integrated virtual Ibo community around the world, recalibrate our political and social mobilization processes help in economic growth, access to healthcare services, and even driving transfer of technology. To that extent, we cannot but agree that social media is relevant to the development of Igbo land. I thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>
Thank you very much. Um, uh, that was uh, a fantastic um, um, uh, lecture, and uh, you know a lot of uh, new insights. And um, there's a lot that you have uh, powered through in you know record that time. So, Prof, we want to thank you for um, your uh, insights. We want to thank you for sharing. Uh, your scholarly insights, and uh, you have raised a lot of important, you know, issues. You've talked about some of the native strength of uh, the Igbo man of uh, of Igbos with uh, ingenuity and creativity. You talked about uh, uh, the innate capacity that Igbos have shown the world over to build a homeland and also to build other homelands outside their own homeland and the range of capacities that Igbos continue to uh, depict wherever they find themselves. And uh, you went into the strengths of social media, of social media and the various platforms, and of course, the weaknesses and some of the issues that uh, are being raised with regard to government and regulation of social media and some of the more recent things we are seeing around the world trying to curb uh, some of the impact social media is having governance. You raised some important points around governance and the way the physical uh, uh, form of uh, governmental engagement had failed in the past where most political leaders were clearly unavailable to their constituents. But, but with the onset of um, social media, it's possible to actually engage with them to an extent because they also want to engage with their people and uh, it can be done on a virtual basis. You talked about used in education with smart rooms uh, as well and of course issues around healthcare access and counseling and mental health services that has become very rife um, on social media uh, and in fact it's a go-to place for most persons who need uh, these services and it needs to be expanded because for us to have uh, they said health is wealth but these days from what you have shown us health is everything so if we can actually build a healthy population we can actually achieve the sort of development we are looking for. Of course, you uh, detailed into technology transfer, which I think is one area that a lot of young people continue to uh, uh, leverage social media for um, by interacting with their peers uh, in other parts of the world uh, to learn um, some of the uh, new technologies that may be, uh, be uh, on u in use or being applied in those parts of the world. So, prof. Um, I think uh, it has been a fantastic uh, one, and um, we are all applauding uh, you. So thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. We um, have been sitting for about an hour, and as uh, health uh, professionals and, uh, uh, in a, and as persons who understand um, the circulation within the human body, we want to encourage everybody to stand up for uh, a few seconds and stretch so that we don't have any deep venous uh, thrombosis or any thromboembolic uh, God forbid event. Uh, so this is the time for us to all stand up and stretch for a few minutes. If you have your cup of tea or water, you can take a cup of water or tea and uh, just for a few seconds actually we back. Uh, so I'm doing that here. So I'm up. So just make sure that your circulation is okay. You shouldn't be sitting for too long. Uh, it's important. So you can stretch on your seat as well. You can stretch your legs under your table and uh, make sure that your circulation is, everything is intact. So um, thank you very much. As we have uh, done that, we will now proceed to listen to um, a key constituent of the conversations today. Today's conversations, we're talking about development, we're talking about social media and new media platforms. We're talking about um, a key constituent, which is young persons who are going to drive a lot of development in society. We're talking about um, the, demo, the, um, democrat, um, the um, demographic dividend. Um, for instance, in Igbo land, we have a lot of young persons, energetic young persons, and many of them are on these social media platforms. So it's important to also hear um, a perspective. Um, Prof having given us um, very deep insights. So are there other perspectives from some of the young persons or their representatives that may also enrich 
uh, this conversation. Uh, to have that, uh, to share in this uh, uh, um, insight on some of what Prof has already um, shared with us, we we'll invite um, um, Ike Akwarandu, Akwarandu, who is um, the uh, Senior Special Assistant uh, to uh, the Governor Emeritus of Emo, Emo State uh, on new and social media. So he would, uh, for the next few minutes and um, couple of minutes, share with us, um, uh, like just like an uh, intervention, a uh, rejoinder on what is the youth perspective, just you know, on some of what Prof has said and what does he think. So um, is Mr. Um, Ike available? Okay. So, um, oh, great. So you're welcome, um, um, Ike. Uh, okay, you can tell yourself. So Ike is uh, also a policy analyst. He is the ED of Vocal Digital Media, um, and he consults uh, for organizations and, of course, individuals as well on uh, new media and other um, uh, digital media related uh, um, activities and projects. So you're welcome, uh, Mr. Kwarandu. Um, the lecture has been fantastic. Uh, Prof raised a number of issues um, around education of the population using these platforms, around, around mobilization, which is an area I'm sure you are also very in tune with, and also technology transfers. So I don't know, what do you think about, uh, um, uh, what's your perspective, and what would you say young persons uh, have taken out of this lecture, and what can you share with us? based on your own experience. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, the moderator. Thank you. Good evening. Good morning. Depend, uh, uh, depending on where you are joining us from, this uh, for us in Nigeria here this evening. And I want to thank everyone for this very important uh, program and section, which uh, we started some hours ago. It's been very fruitful. And I must say that Prof has given a, a very detailed analysis of why we are here today. And I would also go ahead to touch on certain areas. And uh, at the end of the day, I believe we will have uh, all it takes to, we will, we will find all it takes for us to be here today. Prof, uh, Professor Omolere was a great man who passed on some years ago, eight years ago in the service of this nation. Despite our time constraint, I won't continue this lecture without paying tribute to him. And I believe that uh, he made a standing part in the development of this country, both in his immediate communities and the world at large. Because was a, a great man, he, he, he was, uh, confident, he, I, I can confidently say that in all his dealings, he was mindful to serve humanity to the end. I miss his brilliancy and modest way of life. And uh, I know wherever he is, he will be rejoicing that we are gathered here today on his behalf. The social media as we have come to, the, the, this lecture, I must say, has been a driving force for positive change in our society. I say a big thank you to Doc Nizers for this honor. I pray that greater wisdom and insight will be upon them to continue this well in the future. Introduction of my presentation, which I titled, What Ndibu Must Do With Social Media. The theme of this year's lecture, as we all know, is the role of social media in human cap capacity development and in the development of our place, the Igbo land, Alibu. I believe that this topic is very timely and I, it's important considering the time we are in, a time when digital technology has caused major disruption in every facet of life, a time when the big world has come, become very small, a time where the invisible internet connects the visible world and the all of us are here. Look at us today, connected on Zoom from the comfort of our rooms. I think we have to use ourselves as the first examples of what social media has done for us, the positive aspect of social media. 
yesterday I was on a conference call with a friend and we had a, a, a WhatsApp video call with about two to three people and we all, we are seeing our environment. That is the benefit of social media and what it has done for us. Gone are the days when people must travel from here to other parts of the world for business transaction. In today's world, once you are certain that you are dealing with the right people, you can stay in the comfort of your room, your office, and do business transactions worth millions of Naira. For us as a people, the Igbo community must not leave her development to chance. We need to take advantage of social media to build a stronger and more developed community. Let me begin with human capital development. Human capital development is a process where individuals, organizations, and societies build on existing skills and knowledge of its members to drive a dynamic and flexible process of change. To us, it is strengthening the skills and knowledge of the Igbo people and communities in order to achieve social behavioral change, as well as infrastructural development leading to a stronger and more progressive Igbo society. As Igbo, we have known our, we, have, we are known for our industriousness, resilience, hard work, intellectual prowess, and rich cultural heritage. We are no doubt the commercial hub of Nigeria. The life of the nation, and despite the challenges we've faced as a people from the civil war till death, we have remained unbroken and very strong. According to Investopedia, as a computer-based technology that facilitates sharing of ideas, just like we are sharing ideas today, thoughts and information through building virtual networks and communities. It, it can take many different forms, including social internet forum, WhatsApp, etc. Let me say at this point that the historical background of social media Nigeria as a whole was uh, in 1996 unable to afford the internet. It was at close to the year 2000, 2000 that operations of the internet became more visible in Nigeria. However, the South East has constantly been categorized as a unifying people that have used these two to benefit themselves. A study found out that a larger percentage of the people that are on Facebook in Nigeria are actually the young people from the South Eastern region of Nigeria. Let us go to the role of social media in human capital development in the development of Social media has become vital for social development in the world. And even and even social media has become in Nigeria, social media of informing. Right. And entertaining. Social media right. has the capacity to engineer social change and reform. The immense power of social media was visible just recently and their voices to the answers and police brutality campaign that happened in Nigeria. We also saw, we, we also witnessed. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think the network uh, uh, challenges are also some of the uh, areas that will still have to be smoothed out um, with regard um, some of the advances we're seeing with social media. Um, 
So I'm sure I um, the speaker is not Can very clear. Can you hear so, me? Yes, you're, you're back on. Um, I, I, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Yeah. yeah, so you weren't very clear. Um, and, uh, you know, we are really interested in all that, you know, you are uh, sharing, the perspective you're sharing. Uh, so uh, you can go ahead. I, but, I um, have to begin from the role of social media in human capital development and in the development no, so just of continue. Yeah, so you can continue from where you were. You were talking about the NSAS protest. Yeah, okay. uh, but you know, but we'd like you to wrap up so we can give the opportunity to others to also share, uh, you know, perspectives uh, uh, before we wrap up. Yeah, thank you. So, so we saw the effects of social media during that time, and it was all over the place. Even the international community were able to know what is happening in our country because our people use social media to amplify those things. The Igbo community, therefore needs to harness this power of social media in creative ways to ensure that human capital development of its people are captured. There is no doubt that the social media has its negative parts, just like Prof said. However, it is our duty to harness the positive aspects of social media and utilize it to engineer positive change in our limbo. The question therefore is, what are these areas that we can harness using social media? I, 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 I'm going to begin from commerce. Commerce is a very important area in our Igbo. The Igbo economy is one of the most vibrant economies in Nigeria, built firmly on the pillars of trade and commerce. We are known for our skills in trading and building sustainable markets. We have numerous successful businessmen and women all over the world engaging, in, engaging in import and export, as well as a thriving Emoahia and the Igbo Dibo system, which builds successive generations of business savvy men. As a people, we can utilize social media to expand our markets far beyond its traditional vicinity while gaining access to the markets all around the world. In today's world, the Igbo man selling electronics at Import Navy can market his products and get immediate buyers through social media platforms. He can as well stay at a place using social media platform, order and receive goods, what billions of naira without having to move an inch. Social media has become an avenue to promote and market goods and services. As in the also, one of our greatest brands is ABA that we have in Abia State. ABA has over the years turned to an industrial hub where almost everything can be fixed. I make bold to say that made in ABA products today have gained more prominence through the advent of social media. It is glad to note that ABA at this moment is currently having a fashion show where all their products are displayed. And this is amplified to the world through the use of social media. Why this is commendable, it is not yet Uhuru for us. The government must do more to fortify our industry to be a stronger exporter of communities of commodities. It is a fact to note that the footwears, clothes, most of which are used outside the region, are all products of uh, ABA in Abia State. Social media, if properly harnessed, can be used to attract foreign invest investment to Igbo land. This brings us to the need to strongly invest more in training our young people in courses like dig digital marketing, social media marketing, coding, search engine optimization, photography, cinematography, etc. Some of these very neglected areas have turned to the new oil blocks in our climb today. Another area where we can harness social media is education and culture. Prof talked about education. Indeed, we are known for producing intellectuals who go on to impact greatly on our society. Taking, for instance, our professor Onwodere was a renowned university professor who made landmark contributions to science. Prof did not only impact academically, he became a positive role model to many young people. For the Igbo intellectuals, social media can be used as a tool to educate our people, most especially our youths. Also understanding the fact that we have many of Igbo communities who do not reside in Igbo land. Our culture seems to have been watered down. Today, 
young people of Igbo origin do not hear or speak Igbo language. Sadly, most of them don't have Igbo names. In some cases, it becomes difficult to trace the person's origin in the case of any eventuality. Why do Yorubas take pride in answering their names and the houses too? The Igbos are found wanting in name recognition. I remember those days why as a new intake in the university, I was going through the list of people that I gained admission with. I saw a name boldly written, Pascal Porsche. It became difficult for me to trace the origin of the individual who I had admission at the same place with. What this means is that if we continue to live in denial of our roots, in no distant time, we might find out that we have no culture to call our own. Our culture seems to be getting lost as the time progresses. Social media can be used to educate our people and, reach and enrich our cultural heritage. In fact, I believe it's high time we engage our young people, many of whom are tech savvy, to build social media platforms like Facebook for Igbo community. We can have websites, podcast groups, where we can train young people on how to speak Igbo language and as well to educate them about our Igbo culture and history as a people. Indigenous knowledge is very important to social, economic, and human capital development of the Igbo people. We must know that the knowledge is in, the, the knowledge is in danger of disappearing if steps are not taken to document, preserve, and make it accessible to the current and future generation. Social media has provided us an opportunity to achieve this. And on this note, I want to commend some of our great leaders, notable among them, the President General of Ohane Zendibu, Chief John Nyangwodo, the, the likes of Osita Chidoka and other Igbo intellectuals who over time have used social media to educate the people and to inform the people about our cultural heritage. As the great literary icon, China Achebe posited, Literature is the mirror of society. However, social media has become the mirror upon which literature breathes. I say this because all the contents produced on social media are all elements of literature, ranging from visuals to audio to written literature, animations, etc. Literature has found life through social media. Therefore, the Igbo intellectuals must use social media to drive a cultural reorientation campaign our culture must not lose its sacredness because of the advent of social media. All hands must be on deck to ensure that the positive sides of social media are adequately utilized. Let me say briefly on politics. For, for, for now, the Igbo community is not alone. We are in a country surrounded by other tribes with their own unique agendas. We as a people have our unique attributes and we must benefit from them at this time. There is no doubt that social media is playing a very critical role in politics. Prof also noted this. Leaders all over the world have social media handles across all platforms to engage the people. Here in Nigeria, we have a situation where most of our leaders still don't consider social media as a very efficient platform to reach out to the people. It may be surprising to note that a good number of House of Assembly members from the Southwestern region are all active on social media with their handles verified. Coming down to Alibu, it is quite important to realize that in the entire Southeast, I stand to be corrected, 98% of Southeast members in the House of Representatives do not have verified social media accounts. As we speak today, no Igbo governor has a verified Twitter account, and this is not progressive for us as a people. In the Senate, aside the likes of Senator Jekano, Okorocha, and the Senator Uchekwenife, and the very little percentage that is less than 5%, most Southeast members of the National Assembly do not have efficient social media pages. This ugly situation has not helped the region in human capacity building and has not helped in facilitating development to Alibo. One, they have deprived the people of quality engagement and feedback. They have also deprived the, the, the young people, a good number of 
media savvy young people employment. For me, this is a disservice to the Igbo land. Social media has presented itself as a tool to drive political participation, engagement, feedback, and also to provide gainful employment to the young people. The failure to run effective social media platforms by our people can be likened to the reason why most of them just barely six months after leaving office as governors, House of Reps, senators, most of them fed into oblivion. They fed into oblivion not because they are not talking, but they are not talking through the right platforms and no one is hearing them. We must encourage our leaders to take active participation in social media, not just for their political gain, but in order to drive a brand and voice which can be helpful to the development of the Igbo community. There are very few ugly sides of social media. It is instructive to note that the negative upside, uh, 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 aspects of social media are there and we cannot neglect them. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of our people were sending out fake information to the public. Some will tell you, give you drugs to take that are not prescribed by NCDC. We also saw the effect of social media during the NSAS campaign. We have people, we have people misinformed the public using social media. But in all this, we cannot throw away the baby and the bathroom. We must find a way to utilize the social media for the positive development of our region. Remember, our people said that it means that in that same fish that has bone, that is also where you find flesh. So it is our duty as a people to pick <coughs> out the flesh huh? and throw away the bone. Uh, uh. In conclusion, we must encourage our people to not only build capacity, but to not only show capacity, but also build capacity. There is a saying attributed to John Sack that good parents give their children both roots and wings to fly. Social media, when properly channeled in the, in the right places, in the right senses, has given our people the wings to fly, and our people must fly this adequately. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, um, Aparandu. Uh, um, we really appreciate uh, your perspective. Uh, um, you have touched on a number of uh, areas by bringing a personal, uh, young, and dynamic angle to the conversations this evening. Um, you, uh, using your, your practical experiences uh, from uh, various uh, responsibilities that we've heard. Uh, you talked about expanding markets using social media uh, and encouraging uh, the enterprise to actually explore social media as a means of deepening entrepreneurship and expanding uh, networks for commerce and uh, trade. You talked about uh, some of the interesting new things that are happening with um, uh, the, with ABBA, which is um, uh, one of the commercial uh, capitals in the southeast, and the ABBA Fashion uh, Week that is ongoing, and the sort of wonderful um, remodeling of the image of ABBA just this last week uh, because of um, the post that they made on Facebook about the ABBA uh, Fashion Week that has been a huge success. So that's an example of the power of social media you know, and you know, where there is a product to sell. And we're seeing that we have a lot of uh, products, be it in uh, the markets or in commerce, be it in innovation or uh, production, be it in uh, 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 literature, or be it in education, our scholars, our politicians, um, with the need for more persons to understand that uh, there's more flesh in the fish than bones. So the impression that uh, we should all run away from social media, that um, it's dangerous. And I think another important point you raised as well is it's important for uh, persons to embrace social media when they have a voice or when they have a platform so that even when the platform is not there, 
the persons who you have engaged will continue to engage with you. And that gives you, of course, you know, the opportunity to be relevant beyond even the expiry of your platform. So I think that's very important. And so the statistics you shared are also very um, uh, important, and we need, to, they need, we need to look into them even after this um, uh, lecture. The fact that most of our politicians are absent on social media, uh, it's something um, interesting to, know, to think about, and whether that actually is having an impact on governance uh, in the Southeast region, I think it's uh, really something that uh, I'm sure the House will be interested in exploring. You talked about, of course, uh, key areas where we can drive capacity development, uh, prop had buttressed on uh, the key aspects of uh, capacity, capacity development and why it's important. You talked about key areas within tech, the tech space around social media, social um, uh, search engine optimization, social media marketing, digital marketing, uh, photography, cinematography, uh, etc. So that these are all interesting areas which you also call the gold mine. So I want to thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Ike Akwarandu, for um, giving us your perspective and for um, sharing with us this evening. Uh, we want to quickly uh, move uh, to invite uh, other members of uh, faculty here today, other members of uh, the team today to speak. Um, uh, firstly, we want to ask if uh, His Royal Majesty uh, is here with us. Uh, we would like to um, Okay, from His Royal Majesty. Um, can you hear me? Royal Majesty. Yes, we, His Royal Majesty, we can hear you. It should be up on the show, yeah. Oh, His Royal Majesty, you're, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. We're happy to have you, and uh, uh, this is a rare opportunity uh, to be uh, in your midst and for you to be in our midst. And we thank you for joining us. Um, uh, we know that you have uh, a word or two for us. We know you don't. You may not uh, uh, speak a lot, but we know you can. Uh, even if it's your blessing that you give to us, we would totally uh, be appreciative uh, of uh, such gesture. His Royal Majesty. Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, uh, it's my duty and my pleasure uh, to be on this platform uh, today. Um, uh, I've missed uh, previous um, occasions, uh, the annual lectures, uh, for reasons of being engaged somewhere else. Um, I, I don't need to expatiate on the, the, the human quality of Professor Celestine uh, O'Leary, uh, who were here to, um, to celebrate, actually, and uh, to remember uh, and, uh, and, um, and learn from his, um, from his own life experience. Uh, I've listened to the, the keynote address and the subsequent uh, speaker, uh, and uh, there's so much, uh, so much knowledge, so much insight, and so much uh, perspective in both, uh, both lectures. And I hope that um, uh, somehow they can circulate it um, to participants and other people uh, for our own further reading and learning. Um, just uh, briefly on the, on, the two, on the two speeches. I think it was only yesterday I was reading um, an article on social media that basically says that Nigeria is, um, is leading the rest of Africa on, um, on uh, you know, uh, in, in the development of technology hubs, uh, obviously um, uh, IT uh, technology, IT technology hubs. Nigeria is leading Africa, but also that Lagos is the main center, is the main Center for IT Development uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, as we all know, uh, for those who are very much in the, in the IT development area, a large number of the players in that field in Lagos, Umuibo, they are our sons and daughters of Igbo extraction. They're in Lagos, influencing Nigeria, influencing the whole world. Okay? Um, which leads me to the concept of Akurona, which was uh, mentioned by the keynote uh, lecturer. Um, Akurona was the, was the theme and the subject of my lecture some three years ago um, at the uh, 25th year anniversary of Anambra State. Um, uh, that was uh, the keynote uh, lecture for that uh, celebration. 
and the election was basically a call to Ndibu to diversify their investments homewards, that is, homewards uh, diversification, not to abandon their investments or pull out of their base in other places, but to begin to also extend to Ndibu some of their knowledge, some of their expertise, some of their, their, their dexterity in, in, uh, in IT development, in business development, <clears throat> in academics, in professions, and whatever it is. See, um, if you look at it today, we have more capital investment outside the Boland <clears throat> than Nanibu, Ibu Nibu, to take the whole world. We have more investment uh, abroad and out of Nanibu than Nanibu. We have more of our experts, uh, whether it's professions in the medicine or uh, academics or whatever it is, lawyers and so on, outside our neighborhood and our neighborhood. So we've got to begin to look homewards because uh, the picture that we saw three years ago is even worse today in Nigeria. I am aware by Nigeria as a country, and we have to prepare ourselves for the eventuality. And my message then was. Whilst we are talking about uh, devolution and uh, presidential project or whatever it is, Nibu should, uh, should uh, challenge themselves and to be able to survive under any scenario in Nigeria. The worst case scenario or the best case scenario. We have the capacity, we have the durability, and we have the, the natural uh, makeup. And that's what we should be driving towards. So even as Nigeria wobbles along, we should set a target that in 10 to 15 years, Anibo, Anibo, Ibo land should become the industrial power base of Nigeria, indisputably. It's doable and we can do it, provided we focus. And that brings me then uh, to uh, the, the unholy, unholy, Castellese unholy lecture series. I believe that this is the seventh in the series. And I believe that in the previous lectures, a lot of wisdom came forth, came forth as, uh, as is happening today. And my question is, what have we done with that knowledge going forward? How are we, or have we, translated talk into action? And that's my own message today. But to focus on uh, translating you know, all the knowledge that you can bring forth into action. And my suggestion that, that today's, uh, today's uh, event, following that, we should set up small group focus groups, you know, on various aspects of what has emerged today and hold workshops and seminars on how we can, you know, uh, dissect further and then translate into action, you know, um, going forward. That's the only way we can pull our network forward. And my proposal is uh, that uh, we should set up, uh, there should be an establishment of a Celestino Institute for translating concepts into action. Well, that, that's not the name, but the purpose of the Institute is that concepts should be translated into action, uh, like in, encouraging small group discussions, seminars of experts, practitioners, and academics working together to move, take one issue and move it from, from concept to reality, concept to reality. That's my own suggestion. I think it would be a great honor to the great man that we're here to honor uh, today and we've honored uh, consistently. And that center should ideally be set up in his homeland. And then so let it be a place for Mecca, um, a place for uh, pilgrimage for, for all of us uh, once a year, at least for the annual lecture. And then for others, even more often a year, go there and be resident for a week and uh, discuss ideas and translate them into action. Thank you very much for the opportunity to make this little contribution. And I hope that uh, it helps uh, you know, the whole uh, effort. Thank you. i stopped so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, His Royal Majesty, uh, the OB of uh, Onicha, for um, your fatherly uh, insights and scholarly insights.
uh, and also for a way forward uh, with regard to uh, our meeting here today. Um, I think your uh, prescriptions uh, for us and you know suggestions as well to uh, move to establishing an, an, a, a, a professor only uh, institute that would also help drive um, or translate uh, uh, concepts to actions as we discuss some of these ideas and concepts is one that is very welcome and we must thank you that is something that um, we will look very strongly into as well so thank you very much uh, we would uh, like to invite um, our mother of the day, um, Yom Josephine Aneni, which is on the call. Um, we know that there's a perspective, um, an emerging, um, of course, perspective that affects uh, uh, our women folk and especially our young girls. Uh, it would be nice to hear from um, Nice to if she's on the call. It would be nice to hear from her. Okay. So while we're waiting for her uh, to share some of her own um, insights, we want to find out if uh, the uh, most distinguished uh, uh, Senator uh, in uh, Abari Bay is with us. Um, a lot of ideas have been raised around the participation of uh, politicians and leaders uh, uh, on social media, uh, using the tool for engagement and also to uh, properly uh, guide the younger generation. And one or two examples of persons who are doing that uh, were mentioned. So it would be nice to hear uh, from the most distinguished senator if he's also on the call, um, his thoughts on these, uh, on these issues that have been raised. Uh, most distinguished, are you are you on the call? You can unmute yourself. Um. Okay, I think uh, it's having some challenges. So, um, so let's get uh, the insights from a uh, team of uh, Elomba uh, Media. Uh, Eluma Media has uh, emerged as a very formidable uh, online uh, media uh, platform and uh, it will be interesting to know what uh, uh, is his perspective with regards to uh, what has been raised today, what has been discussed today. So if I can hear Tim for a few minutes, uh, of course we all know Elumba.com is a very uh, popular media, of course an investigative journalist and journalism uh, uh, platform as well. Tim, you're welcome. Um, commit yourself so we can hear from you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tine Um, I feel actually delighted to be here. In fact, um, when I was uh, when you were reading out uh, the profile of the distinguished guests who are here this evening, I I was a kind of whoa. I felt like an antelope in the midst of elephants. I I got afraid, uh, hoping that I won't be trampled along the line. But having said that, I am very delighted to be here. And uh, thanks to everyone, too, who have made out time to join in this, um, in this occasion. As you can see from the topic of the day, the role of the social media in the development of the Southeast, it goes to show that uh, social media has has and uh, remains a formidable topic in our everyday life. Um, let me start by saying that if you have not been harassed on social media, then check your social media handle again. It's either you are not an active user or participant, or you have your own <laughs> Uh, antidote to the fire coming out from the kitchen of social media. In fact, uh, let me quickly say that in 2016, I remember writing an article addressed to IPOB members advising them on how to go about the agitations 
and the activities to reduce loss of uh, human lives. Well, needless to say that more than half of the commenters on that post misunderstood me and ended up bringing abuses on me, calling me sabo or whatever. I'm sure all of us know the meaning of that, uh, <laughs> of, of sabo, so to say. But that was, that is, those are one of the negativities of uh, social media. Having said that, that does not mean that there are no good sides or no positive sides of uh, social media which could be readily harnessed and put into practical and uh, proficient use. For example, let me quickly say that as at November 24, 2020, there are uh, over 2.7 billion active monthly users of Facebook, which is acclaimed the biggest social media network in the world, followed by Twitter. Twitter has about 330 million monthly active users and 145 million daily active users. And then it also, statistics also shows that 63% of all Twitter users worldwide are between the ages of 35 and 36. The ratio of female to male Twitter users is roughly one to two, which means, which means our, our female counterparts are beating us. I wonder what we are doing with the male users. They are beating us almost two to one. That is a good three points if it were football. Having said that again, it's, uh, in Nigeria, there are about 27.5 million users of Facebook. Twitter has about 2 million users in Nigeria. If we combine this output or these statistics we have just reeled out, it is taken for granted that Facebook is number one most popular uh, media platform followed by Twitter. Now. If we combine all the users of these social media platforms, we can see that social media is no longer a pushover in any sphere of human development. Let us quickly mention WhatsApp. WhatsApp has about 1.6 billion users globally. About 96 million WhatsApp applications we are downloaded in February 2020 alone. WhatsApp is available in more than 180 countries and in more than 60 different languages. Facebook is leading the pack with 42.89%, Twitter 39.81%, uh, then YouTube, 3.67%, Instagram, 3.18%, LinkedIn, 0.33%. If we combine all these users, we'll see that about half of the population of humankind are on social media actively. In fact, in 2016, it was widely acclaimed that Donald Trump won his election, election as US president riding on the back of the Twitter horse. It is also no secret that social media was instrumental to the organization and coordination of the recent NSAS protests and which raised across the country, Nigeria. Also, we should not neglect the impact of social media oriented economic growth. Every day, new social media induced millionaires are produced. One such uh, popular uh, social media achiever is our own young Emanuela. I'm sure that is a household name. In fact, recently she completed a mouth-watering house for her parents uh, with promises of a mansion in view, which shows that social media is not just for the elderly or for the, or for the youths, but even children are keying in to the uh, facilities and the possibilities provided or enhanced by social media. Another area of interest is education. 
In fact, as we speak, some schools are holding their class sessions via social media. That is interesting, especially during the lockdown when schools were under lock and key. Many schools continue to offer education to our children using social media platforms. Let, let it also be known to us that it is credit to social media that we are gathered today via Zoom, which is one of the arms of social media. To cap it up all, the young man who made it possible, my presence here possible today, I met him on social media too. So who can dare now question the power of social media in human capital development? If we talk of business, many of our businessmen are buying their goods in far, from far away China using social media platforms. And many more are selling their products using the same. We from online journalism, journalism sector, see social media as both a sister and a partner as it helps propagate our, our news faster that would ordinarily be imagined. If I publish an article on my platform, Elomba News, or Elomba.com, as alternatively known, immediately I paste the link on social media. It spreads like wildfire to all nooks and crannies of the world. We, one can then confidently say that social media has shrunk the world and reduced it to a spiraling global village. You can imagine my pain, how it hurts well, me and my colleagues when we hear that our governments at some levels are sponsoring a bill to gag social or new media. I mean, what, are they, what, is, what is not understood about the impact and the positivities of social media? I will therefore emphasize that instead of any reasonable government to harass or attempt to gag social media, they should rather seek means to harness the positivities, the positive potentials of social media for human development. They should ask themselves, what are these billions of social media subscribers seeing that we are not seeing? And find ways to key in to this moving human train. Before I go, I will want to join all participants here to pay tribute to Professor C. O. E. Omolere, KSJIFAS, whose legacy has lived on and continues to speak for him. My profound respect also goes to Professor Viola Omolere, who has ensured that the embers of the legacies of Professor C. O. E. Omolere are constantly found. We of Elomba.com say thank you and have a happy deliberation. Thank you very much, um, Tim, um, for your. Thank you very much for your for sharing with us. And uh, indeed, I think uh, it, the message is clear that we need to ex and, um, explore the positives and enhance these positives uh, instead of focusing on the negatives and trying to use them as excuses to gag uh, some of the development uh, in social media. Um, you know, I'm not alone on this. The uh, able uh, uh, chairman, um, Professor Azinge, is still here with us, and um, would like our chairman to. Um, it is uh, around some years himself uh, uh, to join in on the conversations. I'm sure some of the comments uh, made so far, uh, he would have the. Uh, uh, some insight to share as well. Prof, sir. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've been following and listening attentively. Firstly, I must uh, commend and congratulate the guest speaker for a very lucid and well-articulated presentation. And also all the people that have intervened one way or the other. Uh, I must say that we have benefited immeasurably from 
all of them, one way or the other, their insights and the perspective that they shared. Uh, I believe that the last speaker just touched on something that I consider very germane and very, very fundamental, and that is the issue of the social media bill. And the guest speaker alluded to that one way or the other when he talked about maybe some people that believe that there might be argument in favor of regulation of social media. But there are also other contrary arguments. And I, I, I think that from all the positives that have been enumerated in the course of our conversation, there seem to be no clear court justification for the social media bill in the way and manner in the light that governments seem to be thinking of it. Consequently, it is for those who are concerned and the stakeholders to make sure that they bring pressure to bear on respective members of the National Assembly and also all the other stakeholders so that at any point in time, if at all, the bill is subjected to any scrutiny in terms of public hearing that we have more than enough people there to shoot down that bill. Because I believe that it may not be and should not be in the ultimate interest of our people and of our country. And also to say that the perspective that was dwelled on, especially the Akuluna aspect of it, which is Royal Majesty, also dilated upon that it is something that we should also be thinking seriously of in terms of economic renaissance of our people in Igbo land. That is very, very fundamental as well. How do we usher that in? I remember that about four or five years ago, at uh, Uturu at the World Igbo Summit, I delivered a, a keynote address along that line. And uh, since then, the matter has been on the front burner of national discourse, especially as it relates to the Igbos. That we should also be thinking of seriously. But I've always wondered, anytime I leave Abuja and go to Lagos, I find myself around Lekki, and I can say without contradiction that the whole of Lekki is dominated and peopled by the Igbos. So everybody you see there, good majority, 99.9% .9 of the people there owning houses, doing business are Igbos. Not to talk about the other parts. Uh, and occasionally I wonder how realistic it might be for such people to be asked to bring their resources or more or less their skills and what have you back home. How will that obviously resonate and how will they cope? But I know that it is not a matter of return home. It's a matter of trying to make sure that given percentages of whatever you have should also be invested in your own homeland. Whatever it is, whether it is in, the, in real estate, whether it is in any other sphere of human endeavor, make sure that you don't forget your home so that you will ultimately ensure that no matter what, you, you, you have a pride of place and you have been able to help to develop Igbo land. I am also particularly pleased with the announcement made by the Director General of the National Inland Waterways recently that they are trying to revive and resuscitate the Onicha port. For us, that is a very welcome development, if at all, whether it's going to be through Portacot or whether it's going to be through Coco or any other part of south, south, or thereabout, that ultimately ships can now bet along that line, or if they bet in Port Harcourt or anywhere in Calabar, they can still navigate and come to, 
to our nature port. If that is done, it means that in terms of importations and what have you, or even exportation, our people may not need necessarily to now travel all the way to Lagos or to carry luggages to Lagos. We can do so many things using the Onitsha port, if obviously in play. So to that extent, we keep pushing. It is for us to keep pushing, putting pressure on the government of the day to also ensure that we get the best we can get from government. Whilst we are still advocating for Igbo presidency, let us ensure that we get the best we can get. What of rail line transportation? Are we obviously on queue one way or the other, amongst other things? I believe that these are conversations that our political leaders should champion and lead advocacy one way or the other. And all this can well be through the instrumentality of social media so that we can harness our thoughts in that regard and see how we can push. Because if we're able to achieve that, we'll be able to ensure that there is a lot of economic resources coming to Igbo land, and that will help us to revitalize whatever that is ailing or whatever that is not in play. So I want to yield so that other, people's will all, other people will also intervene, but I must say without fear of contradiction. That has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation, and I personally have benefited immeasurably from it. So I want to thank all those that spoke before me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, we really appreciate you um, for the very incisive uh, uh, take on the issues and bringing in you know, additional aspects and questions, key questions on um, how exactly can we help or can we drive conversations to help persons bring back their skills and um, their resource, resources back home um, to Ibu land to help uh, generate economic activity and develop our land um, beyond what we have or what is ongoing at the moment. Uh, you talked about the situation whereby people should look into percentages so a simple question about uh, this is what I have or this is what I am worth. What percentage of what I have or what I am worth is in Igbo land? So a simple question like that can actually be powerful, a powerful driving force to get people to start thinking about how exactly they are contributing to the development of uh, our homeland. So thank you very much, Prof. Your comments were very incisive. Uh, we still have uh, Professor uh, Ginika uh, Agulana. Uh, who is uh, uh, a Dean Emeritus of uh, uh, the Faculty of Education and Student Affairs in IMSU. Um, uh, um, if so, okay, yes. So, Prof, you're welcome, Ma. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. Thank you. um, yeah, Prof, we uh, know that you have a very... Um, active in the academia and also uh, with regard to community development and women issues and have also uh, in IMSU at one point or the other have led the faculties um, as well. Um, looking at the development we're seeing with uh, social media and the conversations we had today with the development of Igbo land, um, what's your take on some of these issues and how do you think uh, we can really achieve our ultimate objective of developing the homeland, given all these uh, um, ideas and concepts and resources. Thank you very much, Chine Merem. I must say that I'm very honored to be invited to this discourse. And um, this is the top back. Top. The Hello? Top back. We are talking about the great potential of social media in uh, human capital development, particularly in the area of education where I operate. I would like to come in from that perspective of the negative effects of 
social media on young users. The MD of the newspaper who spoke earlier had talked about the number of young people on the internet. And it is said, it is confirmed that we have a lot of young people on the internet, children who are not supposed to be so exposed. They are there and they quote the wrong age. Age, you have people who are eight, nine, 10, and uh, 12 being on Facebook, Twitter, and other uh, social network uh, websites. This should not be so. In other words, while we use social media, we should make sure that those young ones who are very vulnerable are protected. Another thing, Ike Aparandu talked about the use of social media to develop Igbo language amongst Igbo children. I was very happy when he said that because I know that Professor Omoleri tried to do that when he was in JOS. He engaged in the development of Igbo language among young people in Igbo, I mean in uh, JOS. Now that the OB of Onicha has talked about turning our words into action, it is possible that we could take to that line, find a way of leading that uh, project so that young Igbos can speak their language. They can speak their language and develop the psyche of Igbo people. I talked about young people on the internet. They are at risk. We think we are teaching them using the internet. Yes, we teach them. But we should also realize that when they are on the internet, they multitask. They are not just reading the content, academic content. They go to other websites and you never can tell what they get when they, they go to those other websites. It's social media. So they go there, they are distracted. You can see I'm in a Zoom, Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Zoom. This is Professor Wong, the Memorial Lecture. They are distracted and there is evidence, research evidence, that there is an inverse relationship between the use of social media by young people and their GPA. It does not necessarily increase their GPA. So I am just calling for moderation. The fact that parents just leave their children with their smartphones and their computers and they think they are all the time studying is not true. There should be, parents should be on the guard so that they can guide their children on what to, how to use social media. If we leave them, they are likely to be bullied. There is cyber bullying. The general manager of uh, the newspaper talked about cyber bullying. We know that young adolescents can be bullied. And then when they are bullied, they can get into depression. So sometimes it leads to suicide. It leads to anxiety amongst young people. And we cannot, as adults, understand what our young people go through. I know that social media is good. It is very effective in communicating information, especially 
in the academia, but there should be caution. We should be on the watch for the red light, which comes from young people being isolated, young people being uh, negatively evaluated by their peers. Something should be done. Parents could be talked to, they can be taught on how to help their young ones. Even teachers also should be uh, taught too on how to watch out for the effects of, of um, social media. I want to thank the people who have organized this. And um, I also would want to thank the chief or the guest speaker who delivered a beautiful lecture. Thank you also to Madam, Professor, Mrs. Viola Moliri, who invited me to this medium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ma. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for uh, sharing with us and uh, bringing an important um, angle to the conversations. Uh, raising the issue of caution uh, is very um, easy to celebrate uh, or to advise, or to promote uh, the good side without looking at you know some of the untoward effects. And I think Prof has really raised the. Uh, bar on what exactly we must look out for and the need to um, continue to teach parents um, how to use these platforms and how to guide their children so that they can guide their children as they also um, adventure the platforms. So um, she talked about the need for caution, talked about the psychological issues or the mental health issues around self-isolation. Uh, that may lead to depression and even suicide, uh, which of course um, has become even more common with the advent of social media. She also importantly mentioned uh, the challenges with uh, academic performance uh, due to the uh, rife uh, nature of the distractions that could emanate from uh, social media platforms and websites uh, that may be detrimental to the young brain and as such could affect uh, their performance in school, and she talked about uh, clear uh, studies that are showing correlation between uh, uh, the excessive use of social media and poor uh, performance in uh, academics. So I think these are also important aspects that uh, need to be looked into. She called for moderation overall, and uh, of course the need for us to, as a key takeaway from the entire uh, eighth memorial lecture, to see how best the issue of Igbo language, of Igbo language, uh, um, uh, expanding uh, learning of Igbo language through the use of social media. Thank you very much, Prof, for your comments. Uh, they have been extremely uh, necessary in calibrating the conversations we're having so far. I uh, would like to um, open up uh, the floor uh, for comments you can indicate by raising up your hand. But before we do that, we still are interested in uh, hearing from uh, small by invited guests, if they are around. Um, um, most distinguished uh, Senator Enyinaya Abaribe is with us. Uh, and um, I heard they're having difficulties. I don't know if that has been sorted out. Um, if um, uh, Dame uh, Aneni is also here, it would be wonderful to hear uh, from her as well. Um, and also, um, if uh, Sir Michael Kiro is on the call, it's um, good to also hear uh, from him as well. But uh, for the rest of us here on the call, if you have comments, uh, uh, you want to share uh, some insights or ask questions from the guest speaker, this is a good time to uh, indicate by raising up your hand. Uh, on your name, where your name is appearing, you can just simply um, right click and there's an icon for you to raise up your hand. Uh, to, to indicate, and we'll call on you uh, to speak. 
uh, if you uh, want, if so, do we have anybody? Any? Or you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions or share your um, comments. Danny. Yeah, uh, I want to speak uh, from the strength of uh, Ninth of St. John International. Uh, my name is Professor Remy Uche, uh, presently the Grand President of Owure Grand Commandery of Ninth of St. John International. Um, I want to thank very immensely the organizers of this program that will keep immortalizing this great icon who made a bold statement while he was a member of Ninth of St. John International. And I want to let us know that when he was the Supreme Subordinate President of Nigeria, Ninth of St. John International, he developed what we call the four point of agenda in, uh, in Ninth of St. John International. And up to now, this four point agenda is a golden rule in Ninth of St. John International. And that agenda borders on discipline, spirituality, charity, and fraternity. Of course, this, as encapsulated by this great icon to the blessed memory, is now a guiding rule for Ninth of St. John International. Because you must be disciplined in order to be a good knight, not to be a good citizen. If you are not disciplined, there's nothing you can achieve. This uh, next point is spirituality. You must recognize your being. You must recognize God and you must, whatever you do, show spirituality, show the source of life, and show how you can relate both with your neighbor and with your supreme being. The next point he said was charity, which is love. You must show love to your neighbor. If, if you look into the God's commandment, it is summarized in love. This wonderful man of history developed this wonderful idea of charity. You must be able to give arms. You must be able to help one another. You must be able to see how you can be of help to your brother in terms of giving him job, in terms of giving water. Remember when Christ said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. These are all within charity. And next one that looks like is fraternity. We, we must bond ourselves together. If we are not united, if we don't come up a force, you can do nothing, whatever we're doing. And these were wonderfully encapsulated by this great man of history that today we celebrate him in KJI. If you mention him in KJI, we'll see he's still alive because we know he had joined the saints. So my brothers and sisters in this forum, I want to, on behalf of the very grand commandery, commend all of us who have spent time to talk more about the legacies of this great sage. We are in KJI, remembering him every moment of our life and pray that all our sundry should be able to operate, to use this, his uh, four point agenda. You can take that to the secular society, just like what we have in Rotary International. When we say the four points ways or what we do and the, 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 the four-way test of what we think, of what we say, of what we do. A guy saw, we say it's a barometer in which you can measure your relationship with others. Is it the truth? Is it fair to your concern? Will it be goodwill and better friendship? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? This thing, you can match them side by side with this four-point agenda. If we can operate that, that area, that one suits exactly into that. So I want to encourage all of us, let me not, not take so much time, or to say that what is what doing for this great sage is what doing well. Thank you very much, my fellow participants. And we pray that God will meet us at the point of our need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer, um, Sir Engineer Remy Uche. Uh, of the Knights of St. John International and the Federal University of Technology Aware. Uh, we appreciate you for um, raising this important ethos that the prof believed in and shared uh, while he was um, the supreme subordinate president of the Knights of St. John International. 
uh, the need for discipline, um, and spirituality, charity, and of course fraternity. And I think even in Igbo land, um, and as we discuss social media and its impact on development, there's definitely a need to see that um, there's a role with regards to fraternity. And of course, Prof talked about the use of caution, discipline, and uh, of course, uh, the spirituality and charity. Many of us have also seen people use the social media platform to reach out to the less privileged uh, in a multitude of ways. Um, so it's uh, very poignant. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, we would um, like to invite, um, at this point, uh, his Lordship uh, has just joined the call. Um, I think he's been, he's been on the call, but he's been having challenges. So um, his Lordship, um, um, Bishop Honor of Nsuka, is the, the Bishop of Nsuka Diocese. Uh, if, uh, you have the floor, Your Lordship. You are welcome. Um, Thank you very much. Greetings to everybody and God's blessing upon all of you. It's a pity I'm joining this late, uh, but as our people say in a proverb in my dialect, if your mouth is too full, you cannot chew properly. And I think, first of all, Professor Velon, whomever is possible, and in memory and in honor of her late husband, uh, whom we have to bear in mind, was a professor of parasitology, a scientific discipline that did not seem to have anything to do with what we are talking about now, like uh, the Igbo people and the Igbo language even. I'm amused that we are talking about Igbo language and all of us are biting our tongues speaking English. So I get back to English, only to say that there are some disadvantages of even carrying on those type of discussion in English. Because there are certain virtues we will lose if we lose our language. And also some values, will, uh, some vices will acquire because we have acquired other languages. There are certain things, I'm talking to you as a priest. There are certain things you can't commit if you don't know English. It, it, nobody can blaspheme in Igbo. There's, there's no word for it, so it's not in our concept. So I thank all of you. I am sorry I missed some of the most beautiful contributions, like even the remark of uh, uh, His Royal Majesty, the Obi of Furniture, whom I respect a lot. And also the keynote speaker, I just got the tail end of his contribution. My contribution uh, will not be too long. It will just be a bit of encouragement, a bit of encouragement in the path we are taking in this whole exercise. Since science and technology have made it possible for us to do this, we should not be afraid of the difficulties that may come from it. We cannot all be using social media and media to be discussing and chatting and still be afraid of the evils that may come from it. As a priest, I also have to remind all of us, God has blessed human beings in a very wonderful way or in very wonderful ways. But there is no single blessing that God has given to man or woman, no single gift of God from humanity that the devil has not tried to distort and change to his own use. I'll give a few examples. God created the human being free, and we have used to use, we have tried to use our freedom to be equal to God and to disobey him. God created the human being and found out we needed companion and gave the first human being a companion and companionship became a source of temptation. It got to the point that God sent his only son to redeem us and Satan wanted to change the program of Jesus for salvation and insert his own. 
But when Jesus said no, it has become a model for all of us that we can always say no to the attempt of the devil to distort positive things that God has placed in our, at our disposal and always insist on making good uses of them. And that also applies to social media. Have we forgotten that somebody thought and, and discovered the airplane and the technology of flying such distances within a short time? And some other person thought of putting bombs into an airplane, transforming something that was meant to shorten distances into a lethal weapon of mass murder. So these are the things. Social media can be very, very destructive, but the uses are always more than the destruction. The person who was speaking when I came in talked about the attempt being made by the government to gag or to moderate or to silence social media users. Well, it is a symptom of the malady of our government that rather than address problems that are raised by some Nigerians, the government specializes in pursuing and har uh, harassing and haunting those who raise these problems. No matter what name we call a, a, a government, any government that is afraid of the opinion and expression of its citizens does not deserve to be called a democracy in any way by any moderation of that definition. So I'll say, yes, control, guidance, especially for the younger people and children, and what we may even call regulation, that is very important. But the Igbos will never accept that anybody who is placed in charge of them will take away from them the power of expression. It will not happen. So, and let us not forget, in religion, Christianity is a religion of community. Now social media has made it possible for people to attend religious services without leaving their homes. And people are becoming lonely in the crowd of the social media. Do we say then that is entirely wrong? Some of us were able to reach our faithful and comfort them in the most difficult period of the lockdown of COVID-19, thanks to social media. So it is both ways. We have to be the people to make up our mind what to do with it. And finally, for the Igbo people. The Igbos cannot become last arrivals in what they found, helped to found. We should not forget in a hurry. Julius M. Aguari, who was one of the names, one of the pioneer names in the internet. All these things about social media are all results of the internet technology. And an Igbo man was at the center of all this. Instead of our young ones now using their mental and the scientific resources for crime, we have an option to use those resources for the development of our land. As a matter of fact, our land has become too small for our population. But social media has opened up the space. We should be the first beneficiaries of the best of this instrument that human mind, collaborating with God's grace, has made available. I can only pray that God will guide all our reflections, guide all those who have planned this, grant eternal rest to Celeste Nongulere, and of course, yeah. health, peace, and love to his dear wife and family. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, His Lordship, uh, Professor G. Honor, uh, the Bishop of Mutoka uh, Diocese, uh, for your take and uh, for sharing with us uh, uh, your own insight on the. On this these resources to um, really better the cost of uh, our land and to appreciate that um, social media has helped to expand the frontiers of um, our land and not necessarily um, as uh, the Mediterranean. So we thank you, uh, um, His Lordship, for your insight. We also would like to um, we have a few hands that are up. But once we, before we take uh, um, from individuals, if we have uh, the Graduate uh, Theological Foundation 
uh, and of course the ILMI, which is the International Liaison of Mr. Indigene. Uh, we want to just hear uh, for a few uh, minutes for a minute uh, some of the good work they've been doing. Uh, we also trying to ensure that uh, Prof's memory uh, continues to live on. Um, there's a collaboration, a, a partnership that exists between the Professor Omoli Foundation Profound and these uh, uh, institutes or these two important organizations. So we'll invite um, the ILMI to say a word or two, and after them, the um, GTF, the Great Theological Foundation. And afterwards, we'll hear from Uche Chris and Stella Uzo Gara, who stands are up. So um, I think um, ILMI, um, the ILMI team is there. Yeah, I'm here. I'll okay. just uh, try to share it to screen with you. You know, thank you so much, organizers, the speakers, chairman, um, traditional rulers, bishops and reverend fathers, and everybody uh, who have made our time to be with us today. I represent ILMI, which means International Layers in Abumbisa Indigenous. Um, the chairman of the association, which has been running for about 12 years. Um, it was a big shock to us that our big mentor, big brother, you know, died the way he died. He, he has been a pillar for most of us, you know, somebody to look forward to, to look up to, somebody you can come to anytime and, uh, you know, discuss your problems and we find your solutions to them. I met Darcel, I'll always call him Darcel, eh? first in just between 1982 and 85, when he was starting the zoology department there. We all know his profile as uh, one of the world leaders in hermetic parasitology. Um, he was an educationist, produced more than 25 PhD students in across six universities. It was a phenomenon. And so when he died, we thought that the least we could do is to work on the principles which lead. That is a tertiary education. So our association immediately got together and decided to float a scholarship scheme for tertiary education of BBC people who would, you know, uh, want to, you know, go to universities and other tertiary institutions. You know, it was based mainly on uh, academic performance, but we also realized that some people may not have all the money. So we kind of run a, a dual system based on academic performance. And again, we look at the background of the families. This was started immediately after that died 2013, and we've been able to award 30 scholarships since then. And uh, you know, to every part of MBC, you know, we celebrated our seventh anniversary last Christmas, and it was quite an intense ceremony with uh, um, Professor Mrs. Amul with us. Overall, the family is very, very cooperative, and they've been really very, very good in uh, this partnership, and we spent more than 3.6 million naira on this program. You know, we are very grateful and very opportune to have, you know, met Darcele in his life. We are very opportune to be associated with the family. And I think we will continue to live along this line, you know, which has laid the, the foundations for and continue to help a lot more people to attend to share education in Darcele's name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Victor Chilaka, for your presentation. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the partnership with the International Liaison of Mbisi and Jin. Uh, and you have proved a formidable partner. And we hope that we can continue to work together and grow and expand the good work that we are doing, working with others who are on the call. It's instructive that um, through the instrumentation of the platform, that many Nigerians have, have also indicated interest in even funding and supporting additional students, um, both indigent students and students who have shown exceptional uh, ability and merit 
uh, under the platform of the ILM and the Professor Omoli Foundation scholarships. So it's still a call. Uh, I don't know who um, you know the spirit is touching. Uh, there's an opportunity here to support someone who may benefit uh, from um, the goodwill of others. Uh, we also would want to hear from the Graduate uh, Theological Foundation. If they are here, they're also one of our partners. And um, if they are here, we can hear about uh, the fellowship which uh, was started in honor of the uh, uh, prof. Okay, uh, we have their hands up while we'll wait for them. Um, let's have uh, Uche Chris. Uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, you have a few seconds to make your comment and uh, or ask a question to uh, the speakers this uh, evening. Thank you. Uche Chris, please. Okay, while Uche Chris is uh, um, trying to uh, unmute himself, we call on Dr. Stella Zogar, uh, whose hand is also up. Uh, you can unmute yourself, ask your question, and um, uh, uh, yeah, or share your comments. Yeah, go ahead, um, Dr. Stella. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity given to me to speak. I want to thank the organizers of this great occasion, uh, uh, the Ongo Leri Foundation. I, I'm so impressed. I've gotten so much out of this. I don't know whether I've ever benefited like this from other Zoom meetings I've been attending. And into the, into the uh, invite. When Sorry, I was in the Owere Girls uh, site, uh, I read the, an invite from my alum, Professor Mrs. Ongole. I said, okay, let me click on it and see. And it led me to the registration, and I'm glad I did. Thank you so much. Uh, I learned a lot today, and one of the comments I want to make is on the idea that some governors, once they leave, or sorry, or legislators, once they leave office, they don't connect anymore. My, my suggestion to them is to hire young people, even if they are not uh, tech savvy, hire young people who will put them through it. Like me, the first time I wrote email, it was through my children. You know, the young people are more tech savvy than us, uh, the older generation. So they will put us through it and then with time we get through it. And even when we leave office, we'll continue to connect with the outside world. The other uh, comment I want to make is in the, with regards to education. As somebody who is also in education, I want to ask whether our education system in Nigeria, whether there is a curriculum that teaches social media to students. Because with any branch of knowledge, there's always the good side and the downside. Just like driving, if you buy a car and give your child, you tell them, look, you have to drive this way. You have to pass your driving test. If not, there'll be accident. There's always a downside to anything we do in life. If there is a possibility of putting the social media as part of the curriculum in our school system in Nigeria, whether it's at the high school level, uh, sorry, at the primary school level or the university level, so that students get aware of what is happening. They should know the upside and the downside of um, social media. It will help to prepare them couple the guidance and so that they don't get, you know, they don't get lost and they don't get distracted and get negatively impacted. And my third question is e-commerce. Nigerians speak a lot of good English, but when you uh, try to order something from abroad, many of the uh, uh, companies that hire uh, call center speakers Hire Indians. Nigerians speak better English than Indians. Is there a way uh, for our government to connect with um, uh, corporate um, organizations in developed countries to hire Nigerians who can speak good English, who can, uh, who can perform better at call centers than other people whose, in, whom English is a second language whom they are hiring? This will help to create job in Nigeria. These are all I have to contribute. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ozogar, Stella. We appreciate your 
uh, comments. Uh, you're very correct um, that uh, young people have a role in definitely driving the adoption of some of these uh, new uh, technologies. And as such, it's also an area for partnership between the young and uh, the middle-aged uh, persons, you know, so that we can actually drive an overall use and uh, deepen the advantages of these uh, platforms. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Um, of course, uh, there's a need. You talked about the the, um, um, the po potential for outsourcing, uh, especially with regards to the massive call centers that are mostly domiciled uh, on the Indian subcontinent. You know, which is generating a lot of revenue and foreign direct investment for that country. So probably Nigeria, well, foreign investment, not direct investment. So Nigeria should probably look at um, a model at the governmental level to attract some of those businesses to domicile these call centers here so that our young persons can also uh, have those jobs and uh, benefit from the economics of uh, um, outsourcing. So thank you very much, Ma, you, uh, the points have been well taken. We'll hear from, um, is, is Uche Chris ready? Okay, I think Uche Chris is still having some challenges. Okay, he's ready. Yeah, Doug, good evening. Yeah, good evening. And good evening to everyone, sir. I'm um, speaking from the perspective of the local government. Great. In this case, for the Great. development of Igbo, Igbo land, and giving our brothers and sisters who are not around, maybe living in different uh, states and uh, outside the nation, opportunity to come home and develop the place to bring their resources together to make sure that the Igbo land is developed. Meanwhile, I suggest that a note should be taken that every local government must have it as a point of duty to map out a land area for different investments, for different people to come and invest in those areas maybe something like industrial area, um, estate areas where people can come and uh, invest their funds to make sure that there is a development in this land. And by so doing, this will also create uh, more jobs and uh, employment for our people, and at the same time, reduce the bad impression or intentions of the young people having bad aspect of the media and now channel it to the investment of the land. In other words, I'm concurring with what the guest speaker said that it is good for our people to come home. Thank you very much. I guess to everybody and the organizers of today's event, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, um, Uche Chris. Uh, Honorable Uche Chris, is actually um, uh, an elect, um, a councillor, uh, an honorable member of the local government council uh, in Imo State, and of course he's speaking from his the look from the context of the what's happening on the ground. Um, so it's a very important uh, perspective that he shared, and I think uh, critically, of course, talking about the need for governments to create the actual avenues for the. Uh, for persons who are coming home, who want to bring back uh, their skills and their wealth and their value home, where in the local environment can these be? So he mentioned two key sectors, industries and uh, also estate development. So I think it's important that this message has been noted and uh, we would uh, carry it along. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Uche Chris. Um, I just want to add at this point that um, We'll take the um, last uh, couple, two uh, three questions there. But well, just to say that the, the global, um, the graduates, I mean, to say Theological Foundation, which is one of our partners, um, is based in Indiana in the US. And they had established uh, a postgraduate fellowship um, for, in honor of um, uh, Professor Celeste Nongulary. And essentially, the idea was to um, get or to drive research that brings together di the diverse fields of scientific studies and the humanities. So they were looking for an African who epitomizes um, science 
uh, scholarship and the humanities as well. And uh, the board of the Graduate Theological Foundation and Institute eventually uh, unanimously uh, selected the professor and only looking at all um, um, their criteria and uh, his, uh, of course, the merits of the situation. So this uh, um, fellowship has run for since 2016, and we really appreciate um, the GTF. Um, we would also want to hear from um, Mr. Pascal Ubabi, whose hand is up. You can unmute yourself and make your comment. After that, uh, you speak for a few seconds. We'll hear from Chika Ewellum, and lastly from uh, Masino Paroji before we go back to our guest speaker and uh, round of. Uh, go ahead, Pascal. You have the floor. Uh, thank you very much for giving. Can you hear me? Loud and okay. clear. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to to be part of this uh, lecture. I I know Professor Omar personally as a great son of MBC in the state and Nigeria. Um, I also know people who are part of his, his family. Um, you know, but let me introduce myself a little bit. I am I happen to be uh, part of the. Um, uh, MBC Policy Roundtable, uh, which, which is cooperating with this foundation to bring this uh, to fruition. I uh, happen to be the Secretary General of NPR and also the legal advisor. Um, now, my, my whole take in this thing is how best we use the social media um, to serve our people in the area of business, education, and of course, social interaction. Um, as a lawyer, I'm going to speak from the perspective as, of, a law, of, of law. Um, there are certain laws that have been promulgated here in the United States that our people do not know about that can help our business in Nigeria, in Imo State, in Imo State to grow using the social media. Uh, we talk about the AGOA law, AGOA Act, that's the AGOA Act, and that's the African Growth and Opportunity Act here in the United States. Uh, which gives African business people the opportunity to come to the United States to export their products to the United States duty free. Now, a lot of a lot of us may not know it. We have a bar, we have a nation, we have a navy. A lot of us may not know about this law. Some men. So, the social media can be a very good tool to disseminate disseminate such information to the people so that their products can be sold in distant lands. Like the United States, anytime you walk to Walmart, you see Chinese-made products. They're not, even, they're not even as good as products made in Aba. The shoes made in China, made in they may not be even as good as shoes made in Aba. But I've hardly walked into any store here, and I have never seen any shoe made in Aba here in the United States. They may be made in Aba, but they don't have the tag made in, made in China. So using the social media to actually let our people know that the products can be sold in the most developed nation in the world. Walmart doesn't produce anything. They sell people's products. The social media can be a very good tool to decimate information, let people know that their products can be sold in distant lands using the social media. Again, in the area of education, like my sister, Dr. Stella Osagara said, in terms of hiring Nigerians to be able to participate in the new technology from whether it is Facebook, uh, even though it's having some problems now, uh, um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, and all those kind of social media, so that they can hire people to be able to get paid, even in dollars, and plug back their money into Imbisa, Imo State, and Nigeria. So those are the tools that we can use social media. Those are the benefits we can use social media to achieve. So. By doing so, our people would improve in in their you know li lifestyle, improve tremendously. So I will suggest that we play a very important role in this area to inform our people this particular law. Now Ghanaians, Ghanaians use it so much. If you go to any African store here, you see a lot of Ghanaian products. Ghana, Jamaica, you hardly see any product made in Nigeria. The oil, most of them from Ghana. The only thing you see, you see from Nigeria are Onubu, Oha, and all that. But there are, there are, there are you know, products made in Aba, made in Onisha, made in Newi, that can be sold here in the United States. And people can make foreign exchange. Remember, these things are duty-free. So the social media can be used in that area effectively 
So, uh, but the last but not the least, we're talking about social interaction. Now, the Agrola thing that the OB of Anisha, His Royal Majesty, spoke about, the social media can be used to educate our people that you don't have to be in Lagos only. You can produce your, your products in Igbo land and have your outlet in Lagos. Most of this, you can register your business in Lagos and have it in Aba or in Ibiza, but you have a warehouse in Lagos where you sell. But the very people who work in those factories are the local community. So the social media can be used in that area to inform the people that this is what we can do to improve our society. Thank you very much for inviting HPN, I mean uh, uh, NPR, to this um, uh, this organization. And thank you very much. And I hope that next time the Professor Wall uh, Foundation will organize this kind of um, uh, symposium, I will be invited to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Pascal Wabi. Um, I think um, we the key message is the Agoa Act. At the, I think the African Growth Opportunities uh, Act, Act and the need to yeah, uh, disseminate uh, information around the AGOA to businesses that are already producing uh, products to help earn additional um, foreign exchange that can be applied to local, um, to develop the local communities. So thank you very much. It's a very key message and we appreciate you. Um, thank you. So let's hear from Chika Iwellum, uh, whose hand has been up um, before we take uh, the uh, concluding comments uh, from uh, Hashim and uh, Mes and uh, Mesterina Parajin. So Chika, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. You have just, if you can just keep your comments straight to the point um, so that we can just, uh, because we, are we need to conclude uh, any moment from now. Okay, that's fine. Um, good evening, yeah. everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Chika Nwailum and I am a lawyer and I also do policy consulting on the side. So I was invited for this event by um, Ion Josephine Anini. I'm grateful for the invite and I want to thank you all for having me. So um, based, going by the topic, the role of social media in human capacity development in Igbo land, I want to take it from the handle of, from the angle of hashtag activism. Um, we have seen recently how much, especially during the pandemic, how much um, hashtags has been, have been used all over the world, including Nigeria, to like bring um, international spotlights to problems plaguing Igbo land wolf, um, and Nigeria at large. We've seen the Sorosuke hashtag, we've seen the NSAS hashtag. We've even seen the ones that have um, impacted us in Igbo land. For example, the Onicha fire outbreak that happened last year. While the event was happening, while the fire was blazing in, um, across the African continent, across the world, we're witnessing, watching videos live through that hashtag. And then earlier this year, the um, victims of that fire outbreak got funds. So that hashtag was used to rally funds for these people. The Akurono is another um, hashtag that has been popular especially on Twitter, and a lot of um, investment and a lot of attention and think pieces and symposium have gone into getting Igbos to come home and invest. Um, also, um, going by this um, hashtag um, activism, we've seen Igbo excellence, we've seen Igbo Amaka. These hashtags have gone on to showcase people of Igbo origin, both in diaspora and in Nigeria that have brought immense pride through their handwork. We've seen the issue of Dr. Onyema um, from, I think, Futo. Okay. Um, I think we lost, uh, uh, we have uh, lost Chika. Um, hello can you hear me okay yeah go ahead go ahead yes. can you hear me hello we can hear you yeah, we can hear you you hello. were yeah we can hear you i think you were, we can hear you go ahead. hello can you hear me yes we can okay. hear you so i will round up now with this social media we, hello yeah we can, can hear you using social media
Yes, I'm a okay. I was talking about the um the the let this MBA drafts that were this year. It Okay, uh, so we want to thank you, Chika. Uh, because of time, uh, we'll just take uh, the next comment from um, um, from Damesi, from Maslin or Perugy. Um Maybe we may come back to you, uh, but time is of the essence. So let's uh, hear from Maslin. Thank you, uh, Chika. Um, I'm Dr. Mrs. Oparoji. Um I know that. Uh, the head of the apology clan has spoken um, during the presentation, but I thought also that we have to make some comments of appreciation on that part. And so I take the permission from him and for my brother-in-law, who uh, I don't think is on, uh, in, in this uh, stage, uh, Prince uh, Callistus Apology, to really um, thank everyone. Um, COE um, was more than an in-law to us. Um, he was our big brother. He's still our big brother because uh, we still have that vacancy and uh, his absence at the dinner table that we always talk to him, even if we don't see him. And when the KSJI person was talking about um, the, the four principles or four goals or items that he talked about, we know that about him. He has shared with us the fraternity aspect, charity, discipline, being spiritual. Those are the things we knew even before he shared it to the world. And so uh, on behalf of the Operagy clan, we really are appreciative of the fact that you all can come out and join uh, this uh, event. And um, I know he used to call me a technocrat <laughs> and I'm yet to live up to that expectation. Um, but I, I learned a lot today from all that uh, was shared from everyone. Um, one thing I want to add is that even before social media became what it is today, I think COE had a clue of the benefits there too. And so um, things like uh, Facebook used to be um, what I call, why is it? Why are we doing that to the stage now where, oh, how are we doing that? It's something we have to share with all. Yes, there are the pros and cons, but when you look at the fact that today we have um, markets within the social media. Um, I know that one thing that we could do on the other side of the coin to really help people not go to the other end, the dark side of the social media is to guide them. And that's what some of the things I do on Facebook is to guide our, our young ones, the young adults. Some of them can sell and buy them now and produce some of their things and showcase what they have that the world can and, and participate in and, and share from. So thank you so much for showing up uh, in honor of our, our beloved uh, COE. And I thank Adanedim, um, Professor Mrs. Songwole and uh, everybody and uh, COE's kids for hanging in there and uh, uh, keeping this alive. I'm excited that this year we're able to, and again, the benefit of social media um, before, because in the past, um, the things are held, these series are held when we couldn't uh, join anybody. But with this media, we are really grateful. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Thank you very much, uh, Damesi, uh, uh, Dr. Maslina Oparaji, um, for uh, the comments, and of course, for the great work you're doing, providing mentoring to young people on social media. Um, such ideas, uh, we also need to articulate these ideas, package them so they can be scaled, so that more persons um, can uh, use some of their free time to get on social media and also engage young people, provide guidance uh, for them. I know that there are a number of young ladies who you have, you know, really made an impact and their lives have, you know, in my opinion, be clearly transformed. So I want to thank you for the work you're doing and for all that you have, uh, the kind comments and the love and everything. God bless you. Uh, we'll hear from Hashim. Hashim, uh, next. Um, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, we take it from there. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I re I'm really excited to uh, be invited to this wonderful event. And 
I really appreciate the organizers and uh, following uh, the, the protocol of the uh, program. I, 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 I really want to uh, uh, explain more things as regards to the use of social media and, uh, um, and, and other platforms in, on internet, you know, to impact in life. So I, I, I stand to exist to, to observe the existing protocol. Your highnesses, your senior um, uh, highnesses, your religious leaders, and, and all. Uh, I really, uh, I really like to uh, make an input as regards to uh, what what has been going on in the country, in in terms of utilizing the ICT and what benefits we can get out of it, and etc. So uh, checking the uh, <coughs> kind of uh, moral values we have in the country, you know, presently, you know, we have some trending issues that, you know, uh, this uh, regionalization and, and tribalism and et cetera, you know, that is being transformed into text and being uploaded online. And those are bringing uh, much divide in, in, in the country and et cetera. And as an ICT consultant working for Reboot, and I have some few analysis that I would like to share, you know, in terms of the use of uh, uh, ICT to impact in, in life and, uh, uh, I really want to advise these, uh, the organizers of this event that uh, uh, social media should never leave, or an occasion like this should never leave everybody behind, anybody behind, everybody, religious leaders, you know, traditionally just marketers, you know, and then senior businessmen, youth, children, you know, need to be carried along. And then uh, what, what was really miss, missing, you know, in the past was that uh, everybody learned social media up here. Nobody go to school to learn social media, and there are no adequate sensitization in our media's uh, organizations, and then at physical seminars and workshops. You know, so you know when you check out these develop developed countries, you know, once a new application is being uh, launched, you know, there is this uh, so many series of uh, of uh, sensitization and, and analysis around what is going to benefit, how it's going to benefit the uh, the. The masses, you know, so this has been left out in Nigeria, and then nobody, the government, and any section of, 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 of the citizens carry this up and, and then make it very important. You know, everybody learn it by himself. Like, I know you are on Facebook, and this app is, is awesome. You can try it, then everybody will start trying it, and then you just uh, come gradually. But it, it has very, very wide difference with maybe a, a professional person to sit you down and touch you how to uh, benefit out of it. So once uh, we want to bridge the gap of these um, social media challenges and, and the benefit it has, you know, we have to uh, carry everybody along. We have to stand on our feet. We have to engage the media stations. We have to engage the traditional leaders, this and that. They have to understand it and they have to use it. They have to uh, taught people how to, uh, we, or let me say, uh, professionals need to teach them how to utilize it and 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 do a lot of critical things. You know, we have social media and governance. We have fundraiser in using social media. We have. I know most of you have uh, uh, very very vast knowledge around this. So um, once the benefits are not being um, uh, are not loud, you know, the the the, the bad acts would use it and and then destroy the whole thing and make it as if it is a bad thing and then uh, which is always the bad will be promoting and then the good will be hidden. You know, so we, we need to like bring everybody together and, and make a very strong collaboration and, 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 and achieve an impact using, using ICT. We have um, digital marketing, digital advocacy, digital this and that. We have e-commerce, this and that. So uh, from the uh, youth perspective, I think, I guess, to, to even use it and and, and and present yourself, you know, out there in the whole world, you know, is, is very difficult, you know, to like showcase uh, your products, this and that, and, and display it online and, and get benefit from the social media to like make it reach out wide to, to, to all across the world is, is very difficult. So I think uh, the youth needs to be taught on how to do this and that. Uh, though I have so many things to say, but I don't want to uh, take much of your time. I really appreciate the organizers of this um, 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 program, and I really appreciate the participants, and I, I really appreciate you for allowing me to, to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Hashim, for your comments. Uh, I think um, you're right that there are so many um, benefits 
that may be lost in um, the way that people self-teach themselves how to use social media. So probably if we had uh, a platform or a, a way to um, teach persons the beneficial uh, and the various opportunities within social media, uh, probably we'll have better use of those positive aspects and it can reduce you know, people delving into uh, the darker side of uh, social media and uh, you know that you talked about the uh, issue of uh, 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 cyberbullying, regionalism, tribalism, divisions, and all that. So thank you for your comment. Um, I think it's uh, very well taken. Um, uh, so we, we that should have been our last point, but we have Doctor we have uh, Doctor uh, Wamako Proji, and uh, her hand has been up. So we will just take it as our last comment. Then after that, we'll hear. Uh, um, some closing, well, not we have some a rejoinder from the keynote uh, speaker. Then we will now proceed to the some of the closing um, formalities. So, um, Doctor, okay. So you have the floor. Uh, you could go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good. Uh, we can hear you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is. Uh, Prince Andy of Paraoji. Uh, fortunately, I am doing this uh, conference with my wife on, on her line. Actually, I didn't really have anything to say other than to correct uh, an impression from an earlier speaker who said that uh, I am not attending the conference. So I said, let me just uh, uh, put that one correct, that I am fully in attendance here. But I have uh, actually listened to all what uh, has been said, and I think uh, I'm pretty much uh, in, um, in agreement with most of the things that have been said regarding social media. Um, if not because of social media, maybe we will not be here, you know, having this discussion on a virtual uh, environment. Uh, these are all products of uh, of uh, uh, social media. But having said that, and um, I also use this opportunity to support uh, uh, the Angularis and the Apologies for organizing uh, this um, first virtual uh, lecture. You know. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, uh, the conference has really gone very well without any hitch. Uh, that's good. I was, uh, although I expected um, that a lot of people in Nigeria will have challenges regarding uh, internet, but looks like uh, that didn't happen so far. So I wish to, again, thank everybody, including myself, that uh, took time to uh, participate in this conference. Uh, Dr. Chisco, thank you very much for uh, recognizing my hand. I yield back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prince uh, Andy Oporoji, for your comment. Uh, we appreciate you, and uh, uh, we're glad that you've also shared some of your thoughts with us. Um, the yeah, I am so day, sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't know you were uh, sharing the screen. I didn't know you were there, so it's my bad. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Well, um, I think uh, we're all better off uh, having to hear from everybody who is interested in uh, sharing their thoughts. The mother of the day um, is with us. Um, she's been able to get on the call. Uh, so I want to especially invite uh, Iom Josephine Aneni to share some of her thoughts with us. She's been aching to be here, but she's had challenges getting um, connected. So if you, are, um, you can unmute yourself, Ma, uh, so we can hear from you, because we'd like to hear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I... I want to thank God that I finally, finally made it because I was trying from four o'clock till after six before I could uh, get in. 
Well, I, I need to confess that that is the uh, disadvantage that the, uh, some, some of us older generation have because uh, it was asking me to put in my, um, pass, my, my password for my email and I couldn't remember it. I couldn't remember my password for my email. I was struggling until I finally saw something like go to Facebook. So I tried Facebook after three hours and I'm happy I'm here. Unfortunately, I've missed, I missed uh, His Royal Highness and uh, Professor Zinge and everybody that spoke, but I, I'm happy that I finally made it. I want to congratulate uh, Professor Bala Omuleri. She's a woman that I admire so much for her humility in spite of all her achievements and um, 10 brains that God dashed her, you know? Um, she's so humble and uh, I love the way that she's keeping the memory of her beloved husband alive intellectually in the line that the man lived all his life. I want to congratulate everybody who have supported them and are supporting them and supporting her to keep this uh, memory alive. It's not only just the memory, but you know, still impacting and transmitting knowledge even from beyond. That is what Celestine Omuleri is doing. So it's a legacy he left and um, everybody's enjoying and uh, taking advantage of it. Um, for social media, um, it's good and it's bad. And like uh, Hashim Hashim said, we should be taught how to use it properly so that it doesn't turn to um, uh, you know, something that's supposed to be good that we, we end up destroying uh, the, the people that created it. There's a lot of fake news going around, a lot of fear being created because of social media. And that is why the government is trying to ban it. But that, again, is not the answer to it because we cannot, as a country, do without social media in a global uh, environment where it is the in thing. The government should educate us how to use social media and, uh, and educate people how not to use social media to create unnecessary fear and division. Um, you know, by spreading fake news. And thank God some of us are learning how to decipher which is fake news and then, um, you know, by checking, you know, cross-checking the news before you start forwarding and forwarding. We need education, we really need education in that area. Um, I know that the time has gone so fast and um, I didn't really prepared to talk because everything I wanted to say went off in the three hours that I was struggling to come in. So I want to thank everybody who is here and uh, look forward to next year's uh, lecture. Uh, whether it is virtual or physical, will surely be there by the grace of God. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, we really we really appreciate you for your um, perseverance and for gracing us with your um, uh, with your words and with your insights as well, and also for sharing with us. Uh, we're very happy to have you, and uh, by God's grace, uh, next year again we'll uh, reconvene, uh, just as you have said, to share as well. Um, I mean, your comments are very um, correct. Uh, the government. Uh, uh, cannot uh, throw away the baby with the bathwater. Uh, while there are bad areas, like you rightly said, the solution is not to get rid of everything, but to identify, just like Hashim said, the positives and teach the population, you know, proper ways to use and benefit from these tools that we have, uh, um, that are new innovations in our economy and use them for the good of all of our people. So thank you very much, Ma. We are very happy to have you. And may God bless you, bless us as well. 
Thank you very, very much. Um, we, uh, at this point, uh, we'll, uh, before we go forward, uh, we have a few more uh, comments to make uh, before we uh, round off. Um, we would like to, as is customary during the memorial lectures, uh, would invite the keynote uh, um, uh, speaker to just give us uh, his uh, last take uh, on all that has been said. But before we do that, I think there's something that came up that must not, we must not lose um, track of, which is the issue of hashtag activism, and which is a key emerging area within the social media space, which regards development. A lot of the things we talked about are issues that are there to us. We talked about Igbo language and all that. We talked about many other issues, commerce, e-commerce, um, the skills, positive aspects of social media. And there's a role to even adopt the concepts that um, uh, were mentioned around uh, by um, uh, Chica around the hashtag activism. So we can pick some of these ideas and use raise even some of the issues around politicians not in the South is not using um, proper channels, social media channels. Some of these things, hashtag activism may be used to raise awareness around these issues, as well as for many other issues, including health issues as well. So uh, it's an important thing I wanted to mention. So we would invite uh, Professor uh, Prince uh, Eddie Okoroji to uh, give us uh, his uh, uh, closing take, his final take, before we now proceed to observe uh, a moment of silence in the uh, honor of Professor Celestine only, then we'll have uh, uh, the final remarks and we'll close today. So Prof, uh, you have the floor, you are welcome. Uh, sorry Prof, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chinemaram. Uh, appreciate everybody. Uh, for a very wonderful session. I don't have a whole lot more to, I don't have a whole lot more to uh, uh, add other than maybe a, a just an overall uh, summary. Um, a whole lot that has been said, two things that come to my mind is that uh, we have a very, uh, powerful overall overarching framework, whether by accident and by the way um, the Royal Majesty had mentioned this as a part of uh, his presentation a while back. But that Akuruno, for me, I think uh, should remain or uh, be focused on as uh, the uh, overarching framework uh, for developing and enhancing you know, channeling resources uh, to our space. So we have that uh, overarching, overarching uh, framework being defined. Uh, we also have what we call our unmet needs. These are on opposite sides. We have that overarching, overarching uh, framework. On one side, we have our unmet needs on the other side. What is missing is constructing a veritable roadway to take our overarching uh, framework to match with our met needs. So I think uh, that is one of the things that I will want us to take away from here is that uh, we have the resources, we have the capabilities, um, all we probably would need a whole lot to work on is aligning our um, met needs to those resources. Um, it's not something that has uh, been uh, uh, done so far. But what is very good, you know, uh, heartwarming is that our people in various areas where they reside uh, continue to show capacity, uh, continue to strive to prove themselves what we now need to do build a road map or roadway uh, to use those resources uh, to improve or meet our med needs. So once again, 
I want to say thank you. Uh, this uh, topic is a very powerful one. And like uh, everybody has said, um, today, almost half of the world, billions, over 3.6 billion people are already using social media. In the next 2025, it's going to be over 4 billion. More than half of the world population will be on social media. It's either, you know, you take advantage of it, I might run you over. So hopefully with the, the enthusiasm I see in our talk and our discussion today, uh, we will be ready uh, to take the challenge and make sure that uh, we take our people uh, into the promised land uh, for the sake of ourselves and also for our children's children. Thank you very much once again for inviting me to uh, this particular program. I've been very much uh, uh, elated you know, by all that uh, has been uh, contributed. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Thank you very much for the wonderful lecture and for stimulating uh, the discussion uh, uh, so far. Um, we would like to invite uh, the chairman uh, to give uh, um, his uh, closing remarks. After that, from the uh, we'll observe a moment of silence, then we'll hear from the convener and we'll, uh, we'll go for the day. So I uh, want to invite uh, Professor Epifani Azinge, SAN, uh, to give us uh, his uh, closing remarks. Professor. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Just to say that the last three hours has been most illuminating and stimulating as far as the conversation is concerned. Indeed, most provoking. And, uh, we have a lot of takeaways. I want to advise that the tape or the communique that will come from this should be circulated widely to all and sundry and particularly to the major stakeholders in Igbo land so that they can distill from the conversation and make the best use of it as appropriate. Once my, I have to join my voice to commend the convener and, and all the members of Profound and your partners for keeping the memory of our late Professor Celestine Ongulary alive. Indeed, from what we have seen today, we can only but say that his legacy lives on. It has been a worthwhile engagement, and I dare say very rewarding and positively impactful. But let me congratulate in a special way the moderator for skillfully handling the program. Your late father, no doubt, must be proud of you and of your siblings. We look forward to the ninth edition of this memorial lecture, and I want to thank you all for participating. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, we really appreciate you. Um, we, we never take for granted uh, the time you have uh, taken out today, um, right from before 4, 4 p.m. Uh, to be with us this day. And of course, the hours you put in even before uh, today to shape the program for today. Prof, uh, we see you as a father as well. We also see you as one of us. And we really appreciate you for um, sharing your time, your wisdom, and of course, your wealth of experience and scholarship as well with us. We really appreciate you, sir. And on behalf of uh, the Professor Only Foundation, Profound, uh, on behalf of uh, my siblings, and uh, on behalf of the entire uh, Only and Opergy uh, families and as well uh, the NBC community and all our friends and guests who have been here today we want to appreciate you for uh, being uh, an excellent um, uh, chairman and for skillfully um, and uh, guiding the younger ones, those of us who are coming after um, you. So we want to appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much and may God bless you and bless your family. Amen. Uh, we would uh, at this point um, uh, invite uh, um, my dear mother, uh, um, if she's uh, she was having challenges uh, coming on with her line. 
um, so um, uh, mommy is not on the call right now, but uh, thankfully, um, um, Dr. Ijoma Dozier, who is uh, uh, my big sister, is on the call. So I would Hello. like to invite. Uh, okay. Hello. <laughs> Okay, yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Bobby, you're welcome. Uh, we're about to hand over to uh, uh, Joma to uh, represent you. You're always uh, with us, so uh, we're glad that you're able to get back. She can, so, make, a comment that. That. She can make a comment since you're already, then I'll. I'll take it from okay. there. She can just say hello to everybody. I'll take it okay, from so there. Dr. Ijoma Dozier, um, um, our big sister, Adam Wai, is she, is she on the call? Okay, yeah, she is. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, very good. So, uh, so Dr. IJ very is a uh, family oh. physician uh, with uh, Nicholas Hobbs in Lagos, and uh, we're happy to have her here. She's very busy. So, um, can you go ahead? Just go ahead and let's get a few comments from you. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Chisco, fantastic yeah. job. Mommy, great job at convening this, um, convening this um, memorial lecture like we usually do. Because it's, a, it's online this year, it's giving us the opportunity to all participate. In other years, we'd we'll have to start taking flights, traveling and all that, but that hasn't happened this year. So it's a very relevant topic. Uh, and we're making use of that avenue for social media. So when there are bad things, good things can also come out of it. I mean, bad things in terms of COVID-19 and good things in terms of our need to be dependent on social media. And of course, the best of this topic that has enlightened all of us on all the potentials that lie here in, bearing in social media, which I'm sure a lot of us are going to harness going forward. So I thank everybody that has stayed on and stayed in all the wonderful contributions that have um, been generated from this um, gathering. The guest speaker, Dedi, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and every other person, everybody has been wonderful. Um, I, I think um, I'm just a bit um, I'm impressed, really. I know we all had a part, to, a role to play in it, but I think it went a lot better than we even um, expected, and we've learned so much more than we hoped. So thank you very much. And hopefully next year we'll all gather again for something more relevant and compelling. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Ijoma Jose um, for the comment. God bless you. Uh, so we'll now hand over to the convener to give a uh, uh, take uh, and uh, we would have a moment of silence in honor of the prof afterwards, and uh, we will now take the closing prayers. So, um, Mommy, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, very much. thank you very much, our wonderful moderator. Hmm. You really, hey, I didn't know you would do this well. Though. Thank you so very much. This is fantastic. Dr. Chisco is Professor Mulu's fourth child, second to the last child, and uh, He's really done all of us proud today. Chisco, thank you so very much for playing this role, better than we all expected. Um, I want to begin with the moment of silence before I make my comment. So please, uh, let's, from wherever we are, observe a moment of silence in honor of Professor C.O. Iomolori and his co-travelers that died in the avoidable Dana air crash of 3rd June 2012. May the soul of Prof and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And we will pray that from what they suffered, operators of airlines everywhere, especially the Dana Group, will be more careful in taking care of their passengers and keeping people alive and not toy with people's lives. Yeah. So back to today. Uh, Earlier on, I was supposed to introduce Profound and um, 
profound activities and even the memorial lecture series. But let me join the chairman, join the moderator and all in thanking everybody for participating in this you know, uh, landmark memorial lecture. We have over 300 participants. Excellent. And we're really, we really very grateful. We didn't expect that number. I didn't know this topic would generate so much interest. And of course, many fans of uh, Professor Mulray himself. So I really want to thank everybody across countries, across races, across tribes, and across uh, states and cities. That uh, it's just a mix or a global mix. And I uh, really thank everybody for being here. And all those who spoke, the guest speaker, you are fantastic. And I really want to thank you for accepting to speak at very short notice. We're already canceling this year's memorial lecture because of COVID. But then second thought, we thought we should also use the social media topic and social media avenue to communicate and brainstorm. And you will all agree with me, it was a very interactive session. In fact, it's the most interactive of all our memorial uh, lectures. So I really want to thank all of you. And I think it's special grace of God too. We didn't have any hitches. Uh, we didn't know how it was going to be, but we just said, we'll go on. We prayed, we made, booked masses, we prayed, we, you know, we had novenas to make sure that uh, and we bring God into it. And God really directed and showed the way. So everyone I put a call to, the chairman, very busy chairman, our former DG of the National Institute of Advanced Legal, Stu uh, Legal Studies, was just ready to come up to chair this event. My brother, I'm very grateful. We are very grateful on behalf of Profound. And all the others, the uh, youth ambassador, IIC himself, uh, was all over the place, popularizing this, the NPR, you know, everybody. Of course, the, His Royal Majesty, the Obi of Onicha. No protocol, one phone call, he said he was in, and Senator Beribe himself, not so much difficulty coming on board. And uh, the mother of the day, a wonderful lady. Mother of the day, maybe she didn't tell us, she's also our leader in the Inkata Inyo Mundi Ibo, an organization that is bringing together all Ibo ladies of high achievement. So she's our leader and we're happy she came on board to give her own perspective. We'll be working with them more and more. I want to thank uh, the, his lordship, Professor Godfrey Ona, the Bishop of Nsuka, Catholic Bishop of Nsuka, wonderful father in the, in the faith. We thank him. We had a, he had a program today, but he had to cut off to be with us. For the media team, Elomba has been working together with us. And I'm happy he also came in to strongly give his own perspective. All those who spoke, Professor Ginika from the academia, is our beautiful mother and auntie, we thank her too. And our grand president, Professor Emiuche, who used to be Dean of Engineering at FUTU as well. We thank him for all he did. So everybody that spoke, those who spoke from the floor, our partners from ILMI, Dr. Victor Chilaka is like our son, um, the GTF group, they were still communicating while we were here, GTF Indiana, who on their own, they never met Prof. But in their search, according to them, of two years, looking for an African genius to use in creating that fellowship, they got Professor Ongule. And then the, the first fellowship that got more than one person each year, and that is that one. So it's just, it's just been wonderful. And uh, we thank God for everything. Um, for the foundation, it was like was um, mentioned earlier on, Professor Onwole himself established the profound, the Professor Onwole Foundation in April, 2012, and the, less than a month before the Dana air crash. And we're happy that today we're able to use that platform to further the ideals he stood for. Um, the lecture is in its eighth year. It's uh, been making a lot of waves uh, from the intellectual aspects. The first lecture was on intellectualism, 
and national transformation by Professor Nebo. There was another one at the NUC and intellectualism as a vocation by Professor Ibidakpo Ube and Professor A. Oanya. The second lecture was on security by uh, the former Minister of State Defense, um, my colleague Senator Banikoro. There was another lecture at Biago University when they were naming the institution, their laboratory after prof. That one was given by Professor ABC Mosu on scientific research and the Professor Celestine only breakthrough, talked about all the breakthrough prof uh, achieved in science. Um, the third lecture was um, by the NUC executive secretary himself, Professor Julius Okeje, who talked of the challenges of the Nigerian university system in the 21st century. Wonderful lecture too. Then the fourth one uh, was on uh, Professor COE's four point agenda that was mentioned today was given by Brigadier General George Kiyomoton, who used to be Grand President of Port Harcourt Grand Commentary. That one held in Enugu. The first three lectures held in Oware. Then this fourth one was, um, the NUC one was of course in Abuja. This fourth, the fourth memorial was in um, Enugu on the four points agenda for someone. And that one was chaired by his Lordship Bishop Cooper from Sokoto Diocese. Then the fifth one, we had um, the problem with Nigeria. The problem with Nigeria, uh, the fifth lecture in 2017, was delivered by His Excellency Governor Peter Ubi of Anambra State. And that one was chaired by uh, Mr. Pascal Dozier of MTN. The, the, uh, sixth, the sixth one, security unity and our future of a, as a nation, was by SAN Turaki, Hello. a former presidential aspirant. And uh, last year, we had um, the topic. Oh. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, um, you need to unmute yourself again. Um, unmute yourself. Um, I'm so sorry. Okay. So where did okay. you, <laughs> where did I stop with you? So that people uh, just get yeah, so go ahead. You um, talked about uh, the you talk about the, the uh, fifth uh, lecture. Expect, the fifth expect, lecture. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the that. the fifth lecture, the challenges. I said uh, Julius Okoje. Yes. Yeah. That one, and then the 2016 one, the sixth lecture was uh, on the four points agenda. That one was the one I said held in Enugu. I was chaired mm -hmm. by uh, Bishop Kuka, the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto. Uh, the other one, the problem with Nigeria in 2017 was delivered by Governor Pito B, His Excellency Governor Pito B, and shared by uh, Dr. Pascal Dozier. In 2018, we had security, unity, and our future delivered by uh, SAN Turaki, former presidential aspirant. And that one was um, chaired by Governor, um, uh, former Defense Minister uh, Austin Akobondo. The last year, the seventh memorial lecture, we had a topic of partnering with women and youth for economic development and sustainable development in Imo State. That one was given by the immediate past governor of Imo State, our brother, His Excellency Governor Emeki Hedioha, and it was chaired by Dr. ABC Ojiako, founder and CEO of Seplat Development, uh, Petroleum Development Company. So that's like the history of uh, the lectures. Today, our own dear brother, Professor Edi Apology has joined the league of these eminent Nigerians who have come forth using the ideas of Professor Wolleri to educate, not just in state, not just Nigeria, but the global community. So today has been a most successful outing because it, it, uh, the lecturer was not just talking to us in Imo state or Nigeria, he was actually, and he actually spoke to the entire world. And so I know that the media, Aquarando, Tim Elomba, all the media people that hooked up to this will take it up from there. And the global community will be the richest uh, for it. And they were talking about the development of Igbo land. The, the, and the development, of course, goes hand in hand with Asusu Igbo. And uh, for me as a person too, the Asusu Igbo is very, very important. As Commissioner for Education, it was one of the projects I started 
we had had um, um, approval from the Executive Council and um, we had uh, negotiated with some groups to introduce the Igbo language app so that our people, even outside the shores of Nigeria, their children can also engage in trying to learn their language. Because we all know that a people without a language, of course, constitute a lost race. And you, you are not anything if you don't have a language. You can't have an identity, not to talk of feeling home. But let's not lose hope. You know, and that is what uh, we were trying to do when I was there. But I just hope that the, by, the, by the grace of God, a whole lot will come out of uh, all we are doing for Profound too. We, we are working with rural communities. Uh, the ideas of Profound has to do with alleviating the sufferings of, you know, the vulnerable, the poor, where the widows, the orphans, and all that, the less served. And we've done that through education. Uh, scholarships like this with ILML uh, support. In fact, uh, would also instituted part of the scholarship in ILMI. And um, we have other people who have helped us in the education of these young people. So the scholarships are given every year. We have housing for uh, widows, for the vulnerable. We've built a couple of houses for them. We have built school blocks. But the seminary in Ariamumwa here, we built uh, the philosophy block for them. And we are doing one or two things for other communities with the support that one in no more here we also got the support from my uh, governor Pitobi in building that structure um we do a lot in the area of uh, health care every year we do free health services free health care i care for people in the rural communities and we thank all those who have been supporting us financially in getting to where we are because um, we really need to get to many more people our people are suffering uh, the ones government cannot do, at least let's begin to do something so that they can be alive before government will uh, realize or come to their aid. So we'll continue to do that. And then this annual lecture, the lecture series, of course, they've been very successful. And I thank all our past lecturers, all our past uh, chairmen, special guests of honor, all those who have endowed one thing or the other, Gregory University, FUTO, ILMI, GTF, uh, even individuals like former SDG president, underprof, engineer Bin Nanyang, who during his youth service in Delta State raised funds, built a library in the school where he was serving and named that school in Delta State after Professor Omole. Many other people have been doing a, you know, a lot of uh, great things in his name and we want to thank them. That the family is very, very grateful and uh, we will continue to stretch out our hands to help people and um, as we also get help, we give out. We have trained many women, many youth in skills, different skills. And we'll continue to do that because it's also part of the development we're talking about today. Today, we're not saying let's develop using social media. We've been developing within, you know, also helping people in uh, securing jobs, securing uh, uh, admissions into institutions and all that you know, alleviating problems in different areas. We thank God for the opportunity. And God has been great, you know, very gracious to us. Uh, all those who have been helping us, even in areas where we need to partner with the church, uh, the church has been also wonderful. In all, this has been um, a most successful outing, honestly. Um, the most interactive so far, because sitting in one place, we heard from everybody across the world in different countries. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't the social media. And so you can see that uh, while talking about the advantages of social media, we're already seeing what uh, it, can, it can do for us. So we call for partnership. Those who can be part of what we're doing will appreciate it because our people are suffering. We need people to help us reach many more people. Our widows growing in numbers every day the orphans too. It's a very pathetic thing at home. But we thank God for the opportunity that at least we can begin, we can do something, and we'll continue to do our best to ensure that all will, you know, the people will benefit more and more and more. So for those of us in diaspora, we thank you for all your support. We pray that you also, uh, so, you know, be part of this Akurono. 
uh, my uh, brother, Prince Oparuji, had talked, my sister-in-law, Dr. Andy also, and all the others have spoken in this direction. We all need to come together to make home, sweet home, you know, what it's supposed to be. And for our wonderful moderator, up you, you're too much. And uh, the chairman has already praised you. The uh, chairman himself was just great, as, as usual. Uh, I know him very well now, and uh, I'm happy he accepted to, to be part of it. So NPR, thank you, Dr. Ihuama, for taking on the technical thing, you know, educating all of us in what to do and what not to do. You, you've been, you know, exceedingly useful and, uh, you know, wonderful. And we thank all, even past students, who have continued to, you know, immortalize the name of uh, Prof. His, uh, his people value their life, I must say. Uh, I think it's just been wonderful. And um, by the grace of God, next year, I think we'll have another exciting year. Uh, next year to to do more and please continue to be there for us continue to pray for us continue to pray for him and i also want to say for all those families who were also lost their loved ones in the dana air crash let's continue to pray for them to remember them and again may their souls rest in perfect peace for family i thank my children and dr ifi young um of course, uh, big mama, uh, Dr. Ijama Dozi, and I make her husband. Uh, then, um, baby of the house, Tejiko and Noma, and the moderator here we're talking about. So, I want to thank the children for their support too. They've been wonderful children, taking care of Mori. Uh, we're very grateful. And for the wider family also. My siblings, of course, uh, Professor Poroj is actually my immediate elder brother, and I thank him for all he continues to do. He's, he always plays a big daddy, and uh, I want to declare her now that I'm really very grateful. And uh, he's, he's been a wonderful brother. You can't ask for more. And I really, uh, you know, uh, thank him and um, his wife, his children. And uh, Amakati, I didn't hear your voice. But in all, uh, and Tingozi and Uncle George, Dr. Mrs. Mwigwe, thank you for always being there. Whenever I've had some of these, she's, she's a medical doctor, but she's also a technical person. I really want to thank her too for all uh, she did with her husband, Dr. Engineer George Mwigwe. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I cannot thank everybody, all of you. I can't thank you enough for everything. I know that God will continue to lead us through and continue to help all of us. All the ideas we've put across today, like uh, His Imperial Majesty suggested, uh, we're going to put them together. We're going to put up a group. Please, when you're called upon to join, to participate, please help us to help ourselves. And um, we'll begin to reach out to other people also who use part of what we have talked about today to do what they need for, for Igbo land. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mommy, for uh, the wonderful. Um, uh, statements and uh, comments and vote of thanks as well and for all that you have shared for the going down through the history of uh, the wonderful work that the profound foundation is doing um, we uh, at this point would like to uh, share uh, like to share uh, the slides uh, you can look at the screen so we have two important slides to share. Is the screen available? Can you see the screen? So that's uh, the um, profound uh, bank account for donations to support some of the work we're doing. Um, we can have it sent to you if you are interested or if you're moved 
to support uh, the work of the uh, foundation. Uh, through this, we have uh, continued to support a lot of young persons, a lot of women and indigenous persons in the country. And uh, we are always appreciative of uh, the, and we always acknowledge our supporters and partners and uh, donors. So we encourage you to partner with us and support the work that we're doing. You can also go to profoundng.org. Um, uh, we are also trying to increase our visibility online as well, and uh, you know we are trying to see how we can, uh, you know, increase and in our brand online. So we are experimenting with uh, uh, our website as well. So you know you can take a look at it, give us feedback, as continue to improve on the website uh, that we are uh, working on. So uh, without any further uh, delay. I uh, would like to uh, take the closing prayer and uh, we will now uh, call it a day. So for the closing prayer, we we'll invite uh, Tochiko, Tochiko on the call. Tochiko or Noma can give us the uh, closing prayer. Okay. So, um, yeah. okay, so let's uh, have a going prayer from this one here. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, and Almighty God, I have Father. We thank you for today. We thank you for this um, opportunity to come together and for this memorial lecture. Heavenly Father, we thank you for making this um, day a successful day. And as we come to the end of the lecture, we ask that you be with us, that all that we've learned today, all that we've listened to today, that we'll be able to put into practice to move our country forward, to move the Igbo nation forward, to be good and participants in to continue to progress as a nation, progress as a people, and progress individually. We ask that you continue to be with the organizers, be with the participants, be with all of us, that you continue to help us in all that we do. Continue to bless us. And this Father, we ask that we um, remember that we have the past. We ask that blessing and you receive his soul in paradise. May his soul and the souls of all the people departed rest in peace. Amen. 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 Name of the Father, the Lord, the Son, and the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, Coach uh, uh, for this prayer. Thank you very much for all our participants who have uh, been here. Uh, for the beginning. We want to thank you all for staying with us. You recognize all of you. Let the friendship increase. 
Uh, we appreciate everyone who has been here. Thank you for coming to the honor to be together. I can't take all the glory when the Thank you, sir. Thank you, NPL. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you can unmute yourselves and uh, you can have the chat. Uh, uh, join the chat. Say one or two things. You can you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. For everybody. Thank you very much, and we thank you for making the lecture. Oh, yeah, wonderful! Yeah. Oh, Come back, Chisco. Excellent, excellent uh, facilitation. Yes, sir. He did so well. The smiling doctor. Thank you. 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 Thank